Right folks, welcome to episode 49 and this week we've got Steve Abel from A Bike Thing. How you doing man? I'm good. How you doing? Oh, awesome, thank you. Awesome. Um, folks, there is a, a bit of an echo and we're doing this over a Zoom call because we're, we're still in COVID restrictions, unfortunately. So there's a slight delay and a bit of an echo there. So I do apologise if the sound isn't top notch, but uh, I'm hoping soon we'll be able to start doing these in person. Hopefully we shall see. So, Steve, that looks a very swanky setup you have behind you. It's a lovely little uh, GSA, fully kitted yeah. out. Especially set up for you. This is all. This is just just for you. I literally put put an hour aside to bring the bike out of the barn, around the house, bring it in the side doors, around the back. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. What's that you're drinking? You just had a little slug. What's that? Water. <laughs> Water. Are you a teetotal? Yes. No, absolutely not. All oh, right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Sorry. I am going. going. I have a bottle of Bomber, Lancaster Bomber, I have. So I'm going Sounds to crack great. that open. I'm not an ale. I'm assuming that's ale, isn't it? It is an ale. I'm not yeah, normally an ale chap. I'm not either. I'm, so, I'm afraid I'm on the typical Corona. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and I've no idea if you're a royalist or not, but uh, to your yes. Royal Highness, rest in peace, sir. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right. So, Steve, a bike thing. To anybody who is not aware of you or your channel, what are you? What you do? What's it all about? It's all about so a bike thing. So, do you, okay. What, what's what's the the what? How do you want me to do this? Do you want me to look at you, or do you want me to like address address your your clan? It's a clan, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> well, the, the clan is all the Patreon lot, but I suppose we could call yeah. the whole community the clan. Um, yeah. If you want to address the people, then, yeah, look yeah. at your webcam. Or otherwise, um, oh, have you got two cameras going there? How's this all set up? No, no, just the one, just the one. So I've, I've got it all on my mirror list up here. And then I've got my Mac down here, which you're on. So I thought, I thought I'd plug it in to try and get a nice nice camera in. Very yeah, all especially for you. Never done, never done this sort of thing before. <laughs> Cool. Neither have I. I just wing it. Don't worry. Looks very yeah, good. Yeah, I'm well, very impressed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, didn't even, I didn't even plan on you asking me that question, so I've got nothing prepared, but, you know, Seriously? it's fine. So, so good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I literally wing it. So a bike thing. Um, I set the company up about uh, two, two years ago on the back of another company called Fancy Bike Thing, which is still going strong. It's just a uh, fancy bike thing was focused around the R90s. And uh, I made a little rear light for an R90 motorbike, uh, but yes. my passion really is adventure bikes. So, um, and I wanted to go down that route. So I thought I'd split it completely and have two complete separate limited companies. But um, it was kind of like a, a hobby. And I've always been an entrepreneur. I've never been employed by anyone in my life. So I don't know what it's like to, you know, to, to have an employer. So right, right from the age of 16, 17, I, I had my first, my very first business. Um, uh, but I had a business uh, which I set up in 2005, which was probably my 10th or 11th company, which really scaled. You know, it, 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 it went very well for me. And um, I sold that in 2015. So I was basically twiddling my thumbs, going on road trips. I was getting a bit bored. I, I wasn't totally tough, turned 40 tough. yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was a, a case of my mate and I, we saw these Denali D4s. And it was like, I can't believe how have we come this far without these bikes? How have we got, how have we got by without these lights on our bike? And so there <laughs> he is, literally about to hit buy now from, I don't know who, but probably Nippy Norms or someone, I can't, I can't remember. But he's about to hit buy now. And I said, no, no, stop, stop, stop. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let me call um, Denali in, in America and have a chat with him. And, uh, and I, I said to him, look, I'm, I'm looking to jump into a new business. Uh, I'm going to set up another company. I'm happy to buy inventory. I, I really want to be the go-to guy, in, not just in the UK, but in Europe. And um, kind of like spun off from there. Now, they couldn't deal with me directly. I'm probably giving you a very long-winded answer here. No, it's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> they, I've got couldn't, all they, they couldn't deal with me directly because they had already signed contracts with RNG. A lot of people don't realize RNG are the sole distributor in the UK for, for Denali. You didn't like it. you didn't know that either. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I then was introduced to RNG, and I was like, "Well, I've already been buying like 
hundreds of pounds of a gear from RNG over the years, probably thousands, uh, from my sports bikes when I was uh, riding my S1000s and stuff like that. Um, so it was nice to be introduced to all the guys at RNG. And uh, before you knew it, um, I was buying obviously loads and loads of uh, Denali stuff. So set, set, set the website up and just evolved it. But I did, ha- and I, st- well, I did have, and I still have this whole thing where I don't want to get too big. So yeah. I actually don't want to scale up because I've been there before. I used to have 30 staff. It was a nightmare. Uh, very, very stressful. Um, and I, are we okay? Your internet connection is unstable. We're good. Yeah, yeah? yours is very jittery here, but um, we, I can right, hear okay. you. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, so and, but I kind of, when I sold that company, I thought, never again. I don't, I don't want to go there. Um, but I'm at the stage now where I can't do it all. I've got probably... Two, uh, two dozen to sixty emails a day coming in for genuine sales inquiries. People want wow. a response within twenty-four hours. Otherwise, yeah. they buy elsewhere, or they're, yeah. they're emailing you saying, "Are you going out of business? You know, you're on holiday or something." And then you're, you're trying to do work on bikes as well, and you want to ride mm-hmm. your bike. Like this baby here has only done a hundred miles, and I've had wow. it since January. I haven't, haven't had a chance to ride it properly. But I've been out on it once. But I was out yesterday in the woods having a bit of a, a razz on it. <laughs> so, that, that, that that was fun. Yeah. So it is, it is crazy, yeah. isn't it? When when yeah. your passion becomes your like your livelihood, you you sort of you sort of lose the ability to actually spend time doing your passion, don't you? It's like I've never ridden so little now that I've gone full time doing this. I, I don't ride anywhere near like I used to ride. Oh, it's a shame, isn't it? I love riding. <laughs> I really, really do. Uh, and I've still got both my bikes. I've still got my old R1200 as well. And I, I'm mm. struggling to let that go because every time I look at it, I, well, you know what it's like to have a connection with a bike. Oh, I'm really connected to it. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just not riding them. It's, 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 it's a shame, really. But uh, So I need to get a member of staff in, someone who can learn all of the mail order side because the mail order has just taken off. Um, it's, 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 gone, it's gone crazy. Um, yeah. So I'm only taking in one bike. So, so to, to obviously answer your question from earlier, I am taking on, you know, I have customers' bikes coming to me. Mm-hmm. I don't even advertise it, but there's enough people who say, right, um, I can see you on YouTube. Can, can If I bring my bike to you, can you sort it out? And because I get that, I've got a, a two-month waiting list of bikes. But when I say two-month wow. waiting list, I only take one bike on a week so i won't take three or four in a week because I'll, yeah. I'll kill myself um you know just burn myself out so yeah um but i love working on the bikes as well so I, it's because you can play, play around and uh, do really good jobs of uh, installations um yeah and, and and but by the way just to address what you did a video a while back and you're saying i bet steve abel's um, oh, yeah. Like screaming at his screen. No, not, Was not, that my wiring? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Because because it's it's, it's all about what, what you're comfortable with. And at the end of the day, yeah. the way you did it, it's it's absolutely fine. It's uh, it's it's, it's, it's it depends on how how much perfectionist you are and how you you know. Yeah. Whereas uh, so when a bike comes in, I don't charge by the hour. It's so it's all like the price is the price. If it takes me an eight hours, and sometimes. A three-hour job will take me maybe six hours. Um, maybe. Not not in solid six hours. I have to spread it across the whole week because yeah. I, I just do a you know, really perfect job. Really, I'm not on the bike. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you, I don't, folks. If you've if you've not watched any of Steve's vids yet, I'll I'll put a link down in the. If, it's, if you're listening to the podcast, it'll be in the the show notes there. If you're watching the vid, it'll be in the description. So I'll put a link to to Steve's channel. You are you make stripping down a GS in particular an absolute piece of cake do you know what i mean when you look at it it's just like second nature for you well yeah yeah but not to somebody (laughs) like for me for me i'd never taken a single cowling off of that gs i came you know the last time i stripped anything off a bike it was a jigsa so coming to the gs i was just like what the hell do i do here and that's how i found you was just like you know how do you remove the tank cowling how do you remove the side cowling all this sort of stuff and that's how i found your vids initially and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they're really useful. If you need to do any work on your your GS in particular, head across to Steve's channel and 
you'll you'll see how to take everything <laughs> off. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> it's because uh, it, I, I get people ask me that question: where, where did I learn? And I think mm. they want to hear the art. The answer they want to hear is: oh, I've got ten years' experience working with BMW. On the contrary, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's literally you probably don't want to hear it like this way, but it's 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 trial and error, but on my own bikes. Mm-hmm. So, um, and when I first started, actually do, fitting them, I had the customers sitting in the workshop with me, uh, and I was fine with that um, because I'd already done. I, I I never I've never worked on a on a bike that's not mine. Um. You know, without the customer being there, that that make, makes any sense. But yeah, I got you. To, to me, I, I know where all the screws are and everything. It's just um, it, you just got to take your time. And uh, I've learned how the panels slide together. I've never broken one, so yeah, <laughs> it's just so, documenting it as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that takes time, doesn't it? Like yeah. the filming. Oh man, like I've I can pretty much install one of these in of camera systems, like. In less than an hour now, you know, it, it doesn't take any time at all. In fact, it probably takes half hour really just to get yeah. that thing fitted. But when you film it, you know, it, uh, like a 30 minute or 45 minute job all of a sudden becomes four to six hours, doesn't it? It's nuts. It does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and not everyone realizes the pain that we go through actually, a bit of filming. Ah, well. the, the filming's <laughs> not so bad, it's the editing, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's what. Well, I find. What I'm finding now is that I'm starting to actually plan my vids now. Like I, I'll actually sit and and yeah. I'll write a script out for them. It's hard when you're like you can't do that on a touring vid or or something where you're out on the bike all the time. But for a lot of my review type vids, I I'll script it. So you know, I'll sit and I'll write. Yeah. Right, I need this shot. I want that shot. This is roughly what I'm going to talk about here. And when I do that, I found. I found my editing's gone from five or six days to produce a video to well, I can I can get one out in a day now, you know, if I yeah. a matter of hours if I if I've got like a story sheet to work from, it's it's a yeah. lot more straightforward. I know what you mean there. Is if you can like wake up in the morning and, and you've already got that idea, you, you know yeah. what you want to be doing, yeah. and you can get it done and dusted and out there. The, the, the same day or the following morning it's great it's when you are building content and you're videoing content over a two three four week period yeah uh and then you come to the edit you're thinking oh, God. you've got so much you've got so much material to work with it's well, a nightmare isn't it this, uh, <laughs> what you do with yeah, this you can't remember. You're, you're, you're scrubbing through everything again when, yeah, yeah. Whereas when it's fresh in your mind you don't have to do scrubbing do you no yeah, and you uh, don't you don't want to cut so anything I, out I just, I just, I, no, you don't. You don't, but you but you have to, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. You've got to be ruthless. You are, like my videos used to be sort of my trip videos from like half hour to forty five minutes, sometimes even an hour. Best yeah. will in the world. You know, ninety five percent of the people out there aren't going to sit through that. So I I try to keep mine sort of below twenty minutes if I can now and. You, yeah. you end up chunk, uh, cutting so much stuff out. And for you, you've got that emotional contact to it, don't you? Because you remember how you felt, what you see, what you did. Yeah. But yeah. other people won't even know it's gone. Well, they, they won't know it's not there. So keep the story. No, no, Story's king. Yeah. My, my, my road trip videos are far too long. And um, <laughs> I've still got so much content from my last trip in France that mm. I, need to, I, I need to edit this last few days. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So before I forget, before I forget, I, I know there's a bit of a lag here. Um, I had someone here yesterday who knew uh-huh. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's turn this around on you now. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, tell- he was telling me all about the stories you told him about when you're in- you've been to Vietnam, haven't you? Uh, I wasn't Vietnam, no. I was in Laos. I didn't, I didn't get into Vietnam. All right. But he, was te- he was telling me all about the time when you... Uh, you were very, very poorly, and you were throwing up into your helmet. Indonesia, yeah, yeah, yeah so was Indonesia. Is, is this information that your subscribers already know about? Oh yeah, it's on video. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> oh that's a shame. Okay. Yeah, when I did the full house, I threw up and and followed through the other end as well. Yeah, that, that right, was yeah, so, so I was hearing all about this over lunch yesterday. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I'd I'd uh, I'd actually con- contracted dengue fever as I was coming down through Indonesia, 
And yeah. just just one day, I'd I'd been laid up for about three days, and eventually thought, right, I've I've got to go now because I've got to get the ferry to. Um, I think it was to Flores. There's like a twenty or forty hour ferry, you know, over the last few islands before you get to to Timor. Yeah. So I was like, I've got to get this, otherwise it's like a week wait for the next one. So I was riding, felt terrible, thought, oh, I'm going to be sick here. And as I, as I stopped the bike, before I could get my lid off, I threw up. And literally at the same time, it, it came oh, out. Oh, your helmet was on, was it? Your helmet, helmet was yeah, on yeah. your head? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, there was there was nothing there because, you know, I'd spent three days throwing up. So I, I, don't, I didn't oh. really have anything left in my stomach. <laughs> Good times. Oh, Thoroughly man. recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. was that then? Anyway, so that Who's, was... Tom Boombox. Ah, oh, Tom Hyam. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So he's he telling me all right? about. He, he was on a. a sorry, they sponsor you, don't they? To, 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 Toro. No, they don't sponsor. Um, oh, sorry. I, I've been I've been down there. No, it's all right. I, you know, London's a good mate. Uh, yeah, London has Toro Adventure and Toro Trail down in southern Spain. So, that was it. yeah, we were all down. That's when I met Tom. Yeah, yeah. Good lad. Mm. Yeah, so sure. I, um, I didn't know he was coming up. So, so it was a company called um, a PR company called Pro Shop in London, oh. who have been contracted by Denali and RNG. So they were up here yesterday filming promotional videos, n- not for me, but actually for Denali. Okay. And um, so I just had to do like a few bits and bobs, and then they asked me to go. Uh, riding through the the woods, so I've got like a big wooded area in front of my property. So I asked the farmer permission, and uh, they got like slow mo slow mo footage of me riding the GSs through the woods. It, it was a lot of fun, a oh, lot of wow. fun. But he, he he's pretty good with the camera. But he was telling me all about his time down in Spain, and he met you. He met um, Missenden Flyer, yeah, um, yeah, Lamb Chops and Rich. Yeah, that was it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Shaft. Who else was um, yeah, yeah. Uh, two two wheels and a ponytail? Uh, she was there as well. Yeah, he, was, he mentioned was, that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good so, 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 I've just I've only just met Tom. So, did he have long hair when when you met him? No, short. All right. So he now looks like John Wick. So when he Does walked he? in, when he, when he walked out, I thought, "What the hell's going on here? We got John Wick, <laughs> the cameraman. John Wick. <laughs> he looks just like he looks just like Keanu Reeves." Yeah, yeah, it's got the window. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a lovely fella, Tom. I'm not I've not I've not heard from him in ages, actually. So if you listen to this, Tom, how you doing? He, he will um, be. Is this live, by the way? No, no, not not live. The the podcast okay. will go out uh, right. next Wednesday, and the video goes out the following mm. Monday. I've moved. I, I still get so many people asking me where have all the podcast videos gone, folks. I've moved all the podcast vids across to the own channel because sadly not that many people seem to to like to sit through a video for two or three hours so mm. the the podcast vids were really harming the main teapot one channel so i've moved them across to their own channel now teapot one podcast brew time I'll, there'll be links down below so yeah that'll come out next a week monday that'll be out it's always the monday following the the podcast like the the, the audio podcast when oh. that comes out um so Let's let's backtrack a little bit. What was your original business then? That big business that you had that you sold. What was that doing? Was that bike orientated? No, not at all. Um, I go back even further than that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so let let's start off when I actually was into bikes. Well, I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was into bikes. Do you remember? The, do you remember those mini motos? Dangerous yeah. little things there, yeah, like yeah. twenty five cc bikes. Yeah. So trying to imagine, I'm this. Uh, I'm in my twenties, and uh, I'm really trying to like scale a business up. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be successful and all that, failing at every hurdle um, <laughs> and stuff. And um, and then, and I was literally, I was at a car boot sale, and I saw some blokes selling mini motos, and people were going crazy for it. And I, I thought. Probably not, you know, I don't think I want to be selling these to my neighbours. I don't want to see these go up and down the road I live in and stuff like that. But I can <laughs> see people really like them. And, yeah. and the internet was actually relatively new back then. It was, it was relatively new. So I set a company up called Extreme Wheels, um, but spelt with an X rather than E at the beginning, Extreme Wheels. Okay. So it, it didn't go anywhere. So I, so I set this company up and, and I made my first website uh, on Dreamweaver, Macromedia or something. Macromedia, remember yeah, Macromedia, I remember Dreamweaver. I used yeah, to use like, it. You, 
and used to make websites out of tables and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so as I'm talking, I go off on tangents, so I'm so sorry. I no, don't worry about it. It's what this is all about. <laughs> it's what my brain, my brain just goes off in different directions all the time. But yeah, so, um, and I set this website up and, and these little motorbikes were, um, I was selling them like hotcakes, but I managed to negotiate with the two suppliers um, in China, but they were they're based here in the UK, and I was getting drop shipped, and I was paying twenty pounds. So this is going to lead on to the, the the big business, paying twenty twenty five pounds to have them drop shipped, which I thought was great. I'd never really used a parcel carrier in my life, yeah. so um, I thought twenty pounds that's fantastic. Goes anywhere. The customer's paying for the shipping anyway. Uh, I'm not having to handle anything. I'm running this online business, which was so cool, and I'm I'm making some dough out of this as well. Um, and then eventually. Um, came to a hurdle, and maybe this is a good message actually to, to give to some of your subscribers. I came up to this hurdle because whenever you get a hurdle in life, I've now learned hurdles actually are a sign of a, a better opportunity because it, may, it makes you apply yourself. It makes you apply yourself to actually overcome that hurdle and you find something new yeah. Uh, and you, you, you beat it and you go, oh, this is awesome. It's, it's, it's a bit like if uh, you hear about people that they lose their jobs and they're like, oh my God, I've lost my job. I'm redundant. Oh, it's, life's awful. But if you apply yourself and you, you overcome it, you might end up in a, a, a better job on twice as, twice as much money or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, at the time though, I've got this terrible news, parcel force, they turn around to me, the parcel courier, I appreciate you probably got people from overseas who don't aren't aware of our <laughs> or the parcel code but the parcel company said to me oh um no it wasn't the parcel company it was the it was the it was the companies that i was buying from who were drop shipping said we can no longer do, do the drop shipping for you because there are a few problems with claims for damages and stuff like that and we don't want to be processing those so i'm thinking i've got to go direct to a parcel broker to, to, to parcel force and yeah. ask to have a, an account and arrange collections from these places but then all of a sudden, I've read, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, it's going to cost probably 50 quid to ship these. It's going to kill my margins. But I managed to negotiate £8 a parcel, whereas I was paying £20 a parcel. So I was thinking £8 a parcel, wicked. And, and uh, you, you're probably thinking, I remember my wife at the time, I'm not with her anymore, but my wife at the time, she was uh, thinking, oh, you, you, you're squeezing an extra £12 profit there. I goes, no, no, that's not where my head's at. That's not where my head's at at all, because this is based on me send, selling 20 items a week, shipping 20 items a week. And so, mm -hmm. so I said to the, 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 sales, uh, the sales manager, the account manager, I said to him, well, if I can ship 50,000 parcels a year or 52,000 parcels a year, well, what's the rate you can give me then? And he goes, well, we can't do that. And I said, but yeah, but because well, you're not doing that volume. Because, but what if I was? Let's, let's say, let's just pretend. Yeah, I'm shipping 52,000 parcels a year. What can you do? And it came down to under a fiver. And he goes, but I can't give you that rate. I go, no, I appreciate that. Okay, well, well, what about if you put me on that rate though? Yeah. And then if I don't hit, if I, if I don't hit 52,000 parcels a year pro rata in the first three months, by the, end of, by the end of the third month, well, then you can put me back down, you can put the rate back up again. And he says, oh, it won't flow. And uh, so then I spoke to his boss. Mm -hmm. She said, no. Now you keep asking, you keep asking. Yeah, Eventually, yeah. she said, his boss, she, she said, okay, we'll do it. So I had this rate of under a five quid sheet of parcel. So that's when I sold my Extreme Builds company, that didn't want to be faffed with that anymore. And I jumped onto my new business, which was a parcel shipping company. I'm not going to mention his name, but, but people will probably Google it and stuff because it's, it's, it, it's, I've sold it now and, and it's been trashed by the company's bought it. But, um, All right. So I set up this parcel shipping company and um, it's uh, turned over a million in the first year and then it just skyrocketed from there on. It's, uh... Wow. <laughs> oh my God. So, uh, so, 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 at, so, at the first, so at the first, uh, so as soon as I had that idea and I had people coming to me, so a lot of people have heard of Parcels to Go. Now, I'd mm -hmm. never mention their name on something like this. You've probably heard of Parcels to Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, my company was in the same arena as them. So, right. we're probably like, um, I don't know a third of the size of Parcels to Go the whole way along. You know, that they, they, they went on, they're probably doing a hundred probably a hundred million turnover now. Um, so we never got quite, quite as big as them. Um, and they were actually one of the contenders that nearly bought me out. And then someone else came along and bought, bought me out instead. 
But um, yeah, so, but I was the first guy who pioneered, and there might be people out thinking, now nah, he's full of, full of shit, this is not true, but it's absolutely true. I pioneered the software which integrated with eBay and shipping systems. So when eBay was first around and people were, they, they were selling on eBay, they had, let's say, had 20, 30 shipments to process a day. Is this yeah. you? No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, it's my but, wife. <laughs> <laughs> but they used to, but you'd be there copying and pasting shipping data, uh, delivery address labels into a, a shipping system and then, process, and then printing labels. And each label would take maybe five, two or three, four, four or five minutes to make. So yeah. for me, it's a case of, well, that data has already been punched into a website when you purchased it on eBay. Mm -hmm. Well, it should never be typed in ever again, as far as I'm concerned, because it's, it, yeah. it, it's data. We just need to learn how to ping it from system to system. So um, mm. I have programmers. I'm not a programmer, but I got programmers to write special pieces of software which um, pinged all the shipping data. So... I could then go to a I could then go go to a company and say right I've got shipping rates for you, um, which is cheaper than what you're paying direct. So you can come to me. I'll give you really good shipping rates. So you so your accounts with me, uh -huh. and then we're going to give you this really cool software which is between your eBay account and our, and our shipping system. So they'll come on. They've sold a hundred items that day. Hit a button. All the labels get punched out. You know, and, and uh, FedEx, UPS, DHL, they still don't do this. They still don't do, do it. Not? So, <laughs> and they should be. No, they don't. But then parcel to go, they followed my lead very, very quickly. And they because they're a bigger, more you know, very he's a very successful CEO, uh, the, the guy of um uh -huh. parcel to go, you know, we know each other very well. Uh it, yeah, he just basically knew how to run that better than me, you know. So um, but yeah, it's, uh, but we, we were still a significant, we were still a significant um, company in the arena. Um, yeah, there we go. Wow. You sound <laughs> a, a very astute businessman, Steve. Like you, you're, you're like a, pardon the expression, but like a, a, a Del Boy trotter in that you see opportunities and it sounds yeah. like you, you jump on them and act on them and, and you make them happy. Yeah. yeah. I uh, know that, that's that's definitely me. Um, I, I I do jump on opportunities and, and just and just go for it. Yeah, good on you. Good. Yeah. The world needs people like that. Absolutely. Um, right. How about we crack on with some questions then? We've got um, quite a few questions over on Patreon yeah. and Instagram to get through. So, you up for that? Sure. We fire on. I, I I don't know why I haven't even checked them because if they're on there, I, I could have gone there and read them, and prepared for these. But yeah, yeah, you, go on. You, you, you can access the Instagram ones, but the pay, unless you're a patron, I don't think oh, you right, are, okay. you don't need to be, but unless you're a patron, you can't access the, the Patreon sort of questions. Um, I'll start mm. with them, patreon.com forward slash teapot one. First one, Matt Jordan. I haven't pre-read these, by the way, so these will be as much of a shock to me as you. This one's for both of you. So, if money was no object and you could strip back and modify any bike and either make it into something unique or repurpose it entirely, what bike would you choose and what would you do to it? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, bloody hell. Now, this is your territory because I don't, I don't know anything about this. The thing is, I'm really brand loyal, aren't I? <laughs> what, for really... the best bike in the world? Mm, I, I am brand loyal and um, and for the record I don't wear a plight vest just in case I have seen some comments <laughs> in places about plight vests I do not, I do not wear a plight vest <laughs> but, um, I, I, I really would like a Ducati so some, something like a, a, a Ducati Dival uh, am I saying that yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, and yeah, I've got yeah. a yeah, and I've got a friend who's who's a Ducati man. He's he's he, you know he's Ducati everything. He won't even ride anything unless it's a Ducati. He won't even jump on the BMW. So and uh, he lives over in Germany. I said, "Come over, I've got two bikes now. You, know, you have one because I'm not going to get on a Beamer, Steve. I'm not even going to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. And, and and the thing is, he doesn't he doesn't work for Ducati. Um, he actually works for Olin. Oh, oh, he passes Olin's. He works for Olin's and. Um, uh, but he just has to have a bike with Olin's on it, and um, yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's not it's not, the, not the BMWs then, is it? <laughs> no, no. But he, he did say when he when he saw this um, 
I haven't seen him for about a year because of COVID and everything. But when, when he saw this, he did, he did say, yes, that's, that's pretty sexy for a Beamer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so what, yeah, so, what so would strip you do a bike back. Sorry? Yeah, what, what would you do to Diavol then? What would I do to it? I, do, you know, I, I actually don't know how to answer that question. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. It, it, have you seen the picture on social media of the, the matching Diavol? And the Lamborghini. But you got the green, the green. It's like a, it's a green Diavola and and the green Lamborghini. They're matching. I think they've only made sixty three of them. It's got Was like that a, a Lamborghini? Logo. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. it. Like the the dark yeah. sort of olive green color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you think about it, the way I strip bikes back, I'm not really. I'm stripping them back. I'm not rebuilding them. I'm not. I'm not a shed builder. Because mm-hmm. I've stripped, I've stripped back our '90s as well, and, and I've done things with those too. And Olin's actually back in 2017. They actually, it, it's because my best, one of my best mates is um, he works for Olin's, but they used my R90 on the stand at Tobacco Dock Bike Shed Show. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah. And it, there was a little bit of uh, controversy over it because they're saying, well, that's not that's not shed built. It's not that's not built in a shed. It's not custom mm-hmm. built. All you've done is strip it back and you've bought bits off the shelf. And that's kind yeah, of what we do with this. Mm-hmm. Stri- I'm not scared of stripping it down so I can get all the wires in the right place. It's a really neat job. And you, when you put your PDM system on, on there and all the wires are rooted nicely and professional, I'm not really changing anything, am I? Not, not really. I'm not... You know, like it's, hats still, off the it's still customizing the bike somewhat though, isn't it? I know what you mean. It's not, yeah. It's definitely not a custom-built bike, but you are, yeah. you are modifying it slightly, aren't you? I, I'm, I'm yeah. sort of like you. I, I don't have the technical knowledge to know how to to strip the bike back and and custom build bits. And and to be honest, I just like the Jicks is a prime example. I wanted to do. I'll, I'll mention it. I, how long are we into the podcast? <laughs> thirty-five minutes. That's not bad. Thirty-five minutes. To do my trip, I wanted to do it on the Jixar, but I I was not prepared to modify that Jixar. I thought, you know, I didn't even, I didn't modify the bars, didn't modify the seat, nothing. I just took it as is, and I I kind of like that. Like with with the GS, I'll take the GS on the track, because part of the reason is because people don't expect it. You know, people don't expect the GS to be on the track. They don't expect yeah. it to to handle the way it does, and I quite I just quite like that. So I quite like taking inappropriate bikes to inappropriate places you know i, I quite enjoy that side of things so yeah. uh, I, I don't i don't really know i, ca- I can't really answer that question matt because i don't i can't there's nothing in my head that i've thought oh I'd, I'd love to do this to that bike and that to this bike no actually actually no i can't answer go. the question now i can't yeah. answer it okay so it, it would be an r100 an old 1980s R100. That's what it would be. Right. Just, just to do, you know, and I know that they don't really go up in value or anything like that, but um, I'd love to get an old R80 or an R, sorry, an R100 and um, strip it back. And I know loads of people who actually do it, my own customers who've got GSs. And I've, I've got a guy up north um, who actually bought his GS to me to strip it back and fit all the Denali stuff on, dash, dash cams and everything. Um, mm. And he was a bike customizer. And, um, you know, but so I, I will, once, the, once my barn is fully renovated, <laughs> a, everyone around here is dragging their heels, all the, all the contractors and the, the, um, architects and the planners. And it's just, it, you know, I was hoping to get started on a little barn conversion here, but, but once mm-hmm. that is done, then I will definitely throw, a, throw a few grand at some old 1980s. R100 and strip it down and but do it myself I, I want to yeah. learn how to do it myself sandblast the engine and everything but that gotcha. still takes time doesn't it yeah yeah it does it does and when you're yeah. you know it sounds like you're growing yet another very successful business there and that that all takes time doesn't it you know that that takes yeah, a lot I've, of uh, I've, dedication I've, but I think I touched on it earlier that um my last business had 30 staff. This business, I don't have any anybody. I'm now looking for another member of staff. I don't really want to take on staff, but I need to. Yeah. And by mm-hmm. taking on someone now, it means I've got to have someone working from, with, from within my home. 
Um, so I need to be able to find someone I can trust who's going to be coming into my house every day uh, yeah, to yeah. run the mail order. Because because right now I'm thinking to myself, well, if we're permitted to go on road trips this year, I can't go. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I've just come back to a mess of, um, you know, back orders and I can't, you can't close shop, can you? No, um, no, no, not at all. You, you, not at you've all. got to keep going. So I, I, I need to have someone here running it for me so I can um, start working on other things because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm to, hoping to open up a ceramic coating workshop as well. All so, right. So that, that, that'll be something with, I'm doing down the far end of the barn. Um, I've I kind of qualified with a company called Ceramic Pro um, uh-huh. last year. You probably might have seen pictures I posted where... I have, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I know you know Ceramic Coating. You've got, he's a, he's a personal mate of yours, isn't he? And uh, it's, all, it's all good with Ceramic Coating. But this is like, this is like deep Ceramic Coating. This is um, me and the guys at the local Ceramic Coating place 20 miles down the road working together. Uh-huh. So a bike comes in, I would then call them and say, right, can I book Can I book one of your guys to come down, even though I can do it myself? Mm-hmm. And the guy strips the bike down, wheels off everything, and we get right into the nooks and crannies. So it's, it, it's a lot more expensive. It's, uh, yeah. So, so it's, uh, yeah. So we get into all those bits that still rust, but you can't see them, you know, so it's... Gotcha. Uh, I'll I'll um I'll plug my mate's thing as well then. Yeah. My mate Pete has Super Shield Automotive. And um I I when as soon as you mentioned ceramics, I was like, Well, I wonder if you've got a supplier because you know, I'll know you say you'll say your guy's the best, but I know my guy's the best. But if you want you know, <laughs> tough to you, it's up to you. But yeah, Pete Pete does a similar job to you. He 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 yeah. properly gets in there. He he doesn't take the bike apart though, so um, you know, yeah, fair play to you for that. Um, I know you have some other plans for uh, the barn and everything there, and we'll, we can certainly get into that and cover that later yeah. on. But shall we crack on and get another question answered? Because I've I've done this before, where we spent like an hour and a half answering the first question, <laughs> and then all of a sudden yeah. it's a sprint to try and get through the last lot. Uh, right, cheers for that one, Matt. The next one is from Ashley Wright. Hi, and mates. A question to both of you: What do you think the next? big thing in motorcycling is going to be Ooh, good question the next big thing hmm. i think electric i think electric is going to be big in biking okay, yeah. but i don't think it's yet people people aren't ready to embrace that yet but i don't think it's i don't i think within the next five years i think we could see a considerable shift towards electric but not yet I don't think there's a lot of um, cynicism, understandably, in some cases, you know, it's by no means as practical as petrol yet. So um, we'll see. Yeah. What, what do you think? Next big thing in biking? I think, um, I think, I think sidecars are going to become a trend. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm frantically Not going so through much. my brain thinking, really? Why? <laughs> Uh, I feel like I missed the boat on the, the um, uh, April Fools. Oh, right. it, yeah, you have a bit. <laughs> yeah, did, did, did you see the Lone Rider one? Oh, with the roof. Oh, wicked. They, they had that going for three days. They were posting oh. about it for three days on social media, and I was like, oh, please tell me this is a practical joke. It's got it, to be. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, but the, the, the YouTube video of the guy, the seriousness on his face, it was, oh, it was, it was, it was perfect. Like yeah, yeah. that was so good how he kept that serious face, you know, <laughs> to, trying to convince you that we've tested this up to over a hundred miles an hour and it's not going to yeah, blow yeah, off. Yeah. I, mean, I wonder. I, they must have. Somebody must have made inquiries. Like, can I get one? I, be, I bet you somebody did. Somebody who wears a polite vest and has a beard. I bet you made an inquiry. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've always got beards, haven't they? Always. I don't know. I've never seen. I, you know, I've never seen their faces. I, I've only seen the helmets. You know. I mean, not. On sort of on my uh, on my tours on my chicken strip tours we have the vest of shame so if like every morning we have a kangaroo court and every, somebody well everyone gets together and they decide who cocked up the previous day so it could be for anything you know you might have made a blatant screw up the day before like got a puncture left your wallet forgot your passport could be something like that or it could just yeah. be a case of 
you know, nobody did anything wrong and people just decide the following morning, right, you're having a vest today. So then you get allocated the vest of shame, which is the pol- it's a bright pink polite vest. And you oh, have so to you wear actually it own one. You, you actually own one yourself that you put I, on I specifically bought right. one for my trips, yes. I've had to wear it. I owe, every trip, I'll always... I'll always get given the vest of shame on one day at least. Yeah. But anyway. Um, right, so if not sidecars, my mate Mart, the mad leprechaun, he'll be he'll be getting really excited because he has he's got a sidecar for a I think it's for an old GS outfit that he has. But he has a sidecar oh, yeah. and he's desperate. An yeah, yeah, and he's desperate to get me on it. And I will I tell you, Mark, I will, I will be coming up, and we will go and do it definitely. Good content okay. as well, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a giggle, isn't it? I'll probably, mm. I'll probably end up enjoying it because I never thought I'd enjoy a GS, and you know, I'm, I'm a hundred percent converted now. So, um, yeah, all right. Good. So, if, if not sidecars, what do you think? Next big thing. Oh, we're past that then. I, I really mm. have no idea. I have no idea. Is what. It's hard to know, isn't it? Because I kind of think to myself, well, we can't get, we can't keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more powerful engines, because they're obscene as it is. But they right. keep bringing out bigger and bigger and more powerful. En- you know, two hundred brake horse now is, it's not a matter of course. But there's certainly quite a few yeah. bikes out there that are knocking it's out two hundred bhp. It's a similar question. It's a similar question to when. Because I, I used to have people come to me, and I, I used to actually go to universities like ten years ago and do do talks to um, well, they, they called themselves studentpreneurs. So they they get me in because I had a, a pretty decent sized company, and uh, I was willing to go around the country and talk at these places to try and inspire yeah. young entrepreneurs. And everyone gets stuck at the set at the same milestone. Oh, I need to think of an idea. I need to think of an idea of uh, like the, the next best thing. And so m- maybe th- this is linked to what you what this question is here as well, because my answer to that would be stop trying to think of the next best thing, because if you figure out what the next best thing is, have you got the millions of pounds worth of budget to market mm. that, which no one knows anything about? Right. Or if you take something which already works, so what works well, and then even better if, you know, so what works well, even better if. So you're trying to think of, or you take something where, <clears throat> where you know, we're always telling everyone to stop surrounding yourself with negativity, with negative uh-huh. people, which is a great, great thing. However, uh-huh. we all know those negative people we have in our lives. And sometimes we can't avoid them because, you know, sometimes there are people quite close to us and we can't just stay bugger uh-huh. off, don't want to laugh anymore. But if we listen to them, if you actually listen to them when they're moaning and they're whinging, yeah, and you, and you find out what they're moaning about, well, you might find there's a solution in there somewhere. And so is there anything on your bike, is there anything that when you're, when you're out riding, you're thinking, if only, if only this, if only that. And, and that's where I come up with my little ideas. Um, yeah. So I could really do with this. And, but, but I think a lot of the manufacturers are already doing They've already got that mindset. So it's very flooded, but that, that's the kind of like, that's where my entrepreneur, my entrepreneurial mind goes. That's how yeah, I come up with you. ideas. Yeah. I've got one for you. Yeah. Backlit switch gear on the BMW. Why will BMW <clears throat> not backlight their switch gear? I'm already working on it. <laughs> Are you? Seriously? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, I'll, I'll buy it. I, I, I mean, it, I, I hardly go out at night time, but when I do, I'm just like, why aren't these buttons bloody backlit? Like Triumph do it. I think Ducati even do it. KTM, I think, do it. Why? Excellent. Good. Watch this space. All right. So I've, I've, been on, I've been on this project for about 10 months, and it's, it, it's falling flat on its face at the moment because of cost. Right. And and because it has to be the same quality. So mm. it, because to do it, you've got to basically, I don't want to give too much away because someone else on here will go, go off and do it, you see. <laughs> because there are people, there are people watching this who have got probably better contacts than I've got, you see. So, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, if someone else brings it out, I'll probably end up 
contacting them saying, right, I want to buy hundreds from you. So it yeah. will work out, but it's, it's it, the, the quality has got to be the same as BMWs. So yeah, it, it's, yeah. And, and the way it works that that, that backlit so switch gear, it's, um, there's obviously where, where the logo is, it's currently painted on where we're like the, the logo of the light and the mm. indicators It's currently painted on there. So mm. you'd need that to be cut away. So it's like the translucent part. So it, it's very difficult. And so if someone okay. was to do, if someone was to make it, it would, it would never be of the same kind of quality. I've actually, I've actually spent a lot of money in the past. I shouldn't even admit to this, but trying to replicate certain BMW components, mm. which I've never put to market. So I'm not actually breaking the law. Yeah, but I've actually tried to. They just don't come up to scratch. Just so don't. Not. No, no. Um, so I've spent, you know, a few, a few grand on on certain plugs, uh, for, so I can bring plug and play products to market, and um, yeah. So I tried to rep because you know when you look inside the back of a Tyco, which is, the Tyco make the plugs for BMWs, and you look in the back of those plugs, and they're all polarized. And uh, if you were to take one of those plugs apart, you might find that there's like, it, it breaks into like four or five pieces because you've got the pins with the little seals. Yeah. And then you've got the, um, uh, like the, the inner part of the plug, which is in two pieces, they clip together. Then that slides through the main outer plug, which we, which we actually handle you know, with our fingers when we're unplugging things. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to those plugs, but buying them in bulk, you know, so you, you can get them for pennies, but it's that initial development and it's a, but then they're, they're nowhere near the quality of what BMW produce. So. Gotcha. So do you, you don't need to answer this if you don't want, cause I appreciate this could be quite contentious for you, but you hear a lot of people saying, Oh, BMW, BMW, they haven't got the build quality that they used to have. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. I've, I'm trying to think to myself, have I have I actually personally experienced that yet? And I don't think I I have. From like 2016 onwards I've had BMWs. And I I can't think I can't think of like a, a drop in quality that I've certainly noticed. Have you? No, I think it's all better. Hmm. So I've I've been my first GS was, um, uh, I've never had an air-cooled GS. I've only, I started on the GSs in 2014. Okay. And I, but, but I was converted on an old, I think it was a 2008, 2009 GS. It's an yeah. old air-cooled where my best mate, he's my best mate now, but I, I hadn't known him very long. And uh, he, he offered me his bike to go to Ireland on. Mm-hmm. Actually, do, do, do you know, I, I don't talk about it as much. This is quite funny. Because, because <laughs> I've, I've gone from an S one thousand RR to an HP four carbon, oh. and I met this guy on a track day. He's my best mate now, and he said, "Do you want to get a, get a GS and come down the Alps with me?" Because we, we both discovered that we both had quite um, decent businesses where we didn't need to work every day, so we took a lot of time off. I was down at Silverstone every week, um, just tracking the bike. <laughs> but uh, and the same with him really that's how we met and so we could take a lot of time off work and we went to um went went to the Alps and I bought that's when I bought my liquid cooled bike but I took his air cooled GS to Ireland right. and um I said to my my girlfriend at the time she's now my wife I said to her come on you can come on the back is no I'm not coming on the back with you she's joking and that's mainly because I the first when I first met her she jumped on the back of an Aprilia Toronto with me and, <laughs> It scared the hell out of her. So, but she said, "I don't mind going on the back of it when we're there." So, she, she I had a, um, I can't remember. I had a Porsche. I think it's a Porsche Panamera. Porsche Panamera. Time. So she drove my Porsche. We live Twilight such and different and lives, went, Steve. And I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I went on the on my mate's air cooled GS. Um, so we both uh, went to Hollywood, had Hollyhead, or on the ferry together. And then she yeah. nearly she nearly smashed my Porsche. She was only about six months old. She nearly smashed that as she came off the ferry. Um, she just went straight across another car. Thought, oh my goodness, I was following on the bike. Think, goodness me, let's just get let's just get across to um, was it Kilkenny or Killarney? I can't, can't remember, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to get to that west coast. And when we got there, then she was she was happy to get on the back of the bike and we went round. 
like the ring of Kerry and the uh, Dingle yeah. Peninsula. It's a it's amazing down there. I want to go back there again. But yeah, I'm trying. But not whenever dying we to go on road trip, yeah, it's like Scotland. I did Scotland last year with my mates, and when I was there, I, I just wanted my wife with me. Like my wife, she's my best mate, and mm. um, it's just like you know, you know Scotland, yeah. So you, you know mm. that that route. It's it's incredible. And I said, look, we need to go to Scotland. I don't mind putting the, van, the, the bike in the back of a van and we get out at the top. She just doesn't want to do all the motorway dry, riding. She, mm-hmm. she, she, doesn't, she wants me to like, keep it under 50 and just keep it relaxed, which I don't mind doing if, I, if I've got her on the back of me and we're chatting. So. I, t- I tell you what, mate, I, um, I always used to just motorway it all the way up just to get up there. But there was one time I thought, right, I'm, I'm heading up. I'm not going to use the motorway. And apart from where I live in Kent, to get over the Dartford crossing, and then I came off the M25 at the first junction I possibly could, literally straight over the over the Thames, yeah. boom, took that junction. And I did back A and B roads the entire way up to, to Scotland. And I'm not kidding you, I was about two hours, three hours longer than if I'd been on the motorway. I think I did it. Mm-hmm. I did it in less than 12 hours. And that was stopping, taking some pictures. I had some fun along the way, but I wasn't being ridiculous. And it was a great ride. So now, if if you know, as long as I can afford that extra couple of hours, I'll I'll always take the back roads now. It's great fun. I use the Simon Weir's route. Do you know Simon Weir? That did um, where is it? These um, these books. He's he's been on a uh, podcast. Yeah, I've got one of those. Honestly, yeah, there's there's a. I yeah. did his route. I did his route up to Scotland, and it was it was awesome. Yeah, well worth trying. And I saw parts of the country I'd ne- I'd never I'd never seen. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. No, she she won't stay on the back of the bike for longer than ninety minutes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But then you know when you go on the back roads, there's lots of places to stop. There's loads of like tourist spots, viewpoints, yeah. and all this sort of stuff. So, you know. Yeah, but if it rains as well, that's the other thing. If it rains, yeah, you know, it's I've got. Why would I've it rain? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Why would it rain, Scotland? <laughs> yeah. In Scotland, it's not when. Sorry, it's not if. It's when. And if you're on the west yeah. coast, generally two to three o'clock in the afternoon, it's going to rain. It might only be for a couple of minutes, but it'll rain at some point. Yeah. Right. Next question. Let's crack on with these. Mark Fulcher. I hope me ducks. Question to you both. Whilst out and about filming for the channels, what's the funniest or dodgiest moment that you have been that you have ever been able to capture? And did it make the final cut? Shiny side up, lads, and all the very best. Ooh, funniest. Funniest. I'd say one of the dodgiest I had was well, if not, not if not the pheasant incident. I don't know if you've seen that, a pheasant. I went to overtake a guy in front. We we're on a ride up in the Lake District and came up behind uh, another biker. And I literally, as I did my shoulder check, moved out and hit the gas to overtake him. He slammed yeah. on his brakes and I, I, I collected the back of him. And it, it was because a pheasant ran out in the road up ahead of him. I was oh, jeez. So if not that... Not that uh, no, that definitely was not funny, but dodgiest, yeah, um... Another dodgy one was my mate uh, Amish on one of the um, Picos tours. Again, I've got this on camera. He Mm. totally misjudged, just did not see a roundabout coming at the end of a particularly fast section of road. And he, um, he basically mounted this big, massive, overgrown roundabout straight into the big, tall, tall grass and stayed on the bike. He didn't, he didn't Mm. drop it. Nobody knows how he he managed to stay on, but I've got that on camera. Funniest, I've not actually edited it yet. Again, a Picos trip. Mm. One of my mates, Kit Kat, was emigrating, and we had his stag, an impromptu stag do, on one yeah. of the one of the evenings. And we dressed him up as a ghost. We 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 borrowed a hotel bed sheet, cut some cut some eyes in it, and dressed him up as a ghost. And um, <laughs> We had some frivolities that night, but I haven't edited it because I'm not entirely sure I can. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. What about you? Well, it's funny because as you're saying all this, you're, you're um, like spurring memories for me on bike trips yeah. as well. So I think, you know, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. So um, the ones, uh, so if I, if I go back to the one in Geneva, 
we were coming, we had just come back from Romania. So, and we were, do, we were just doing um, a circuit of the um, Lake Geneva before heading back up to where the bike shuttle picks you up. Yeah. I think you didn't know bike shuttle or not. But no, I've never done it, no. All right, so as, as, as we like coming around the bottom of Lake Geneva, because the bottom of it is more interesting than the top half because the road doesn't actually overlook the lake. So when you look on a map, you're thinking, oh, that looks lovely, but you don't see it at all. <laughs> but, uh, but on the bottom half of it, you do. Anyway, so as we're riding up, and don't forget, I'm the Denali man, <laughs> and we've got sound bombs on the bikes. Oh, and yeah. I, I don't abuse my sound bomb. I use it when I need it. Whereas my mate, he just he just can't stop pressing. <laughs> he can't stop pressing it. And to the point, on one trip, I actually pulled one of the plugs off underneath when he wasn't watching. So, and but I've got him on intercoms, and and you can hear him because he, he, I knew that when we got to that mountain pass, and there's people standing in the corner here, start whacking it, and all I could hear was this me 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 me, and he's like swearing in my ear, goes Steve, yeah, where's it going? It doesn't effing work. It doesn't work. <laughs> And we had to pull over and put him back on. And uh, I still like, do you know where he's going to find out now? Because he, he, gen he generally thought that just fell off. But Did he? I pulled off. Yeah, I pulled off. <laughs> <laughs> but on Lake, Lake Geneva, we we're walking along. And you know the, the French um, and Swiss properties, they've got the, the shutters and the windows. Yeah, yeah. And they've got the little thin um, pathways alongside the road. And there's this woman, she's kind of fit. She's got a nice tight tush at the back and you can see her walking along and he just has it, to hit it his A tush, tush is a rucksack, people, in case you're, you're wondering. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but she's looking great and everything and he just has to hit his horn. And whenever, and whenever you do that, you've got a sound bomb, haven't you? Uh, no, I had one on the Triumph that I had, but not on the GS. Right, right. But you know how loud they are. And if you're, not, yeah. if you're not expecting it and you do it next to someone, we've yeah. had people jump into hedges. I, actually, on the way back from I'm jumping from one thing to the other, I've had a guy on the way back from Hooters, Nottingham, and he actually I, he jumped in a hedge when my mate hit the horn, but he Jesus. can't see the after effects. I'm watching him jump yeah, into yeah. the hedge. He's yeah. gone. I think, oh, that's horrendous. And it's not on camera. <laughs> But the woman in Geneva, she walked right into the shutter. The shutter was half open. She jumped oh. to the right, and all I saw was poof. Oh. It's awful. And then oh, I had a street, but it, it is on camera. This is on camera, but I was using an Insta360, and they don't, the quality wasn't that great. And I, it, I don't know, because I was riding along at the same time, but you can just about see it over my shoulder with the Insta360, and you can see her coming around the side of the, the shutter. F she, the thing is, she's swearing in English. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Maybe she was English, I don't know. But she was effing it. Yeah. It, oh. Terrible. But no, it, it, was, never, it, never, it never made any B-roll or video or anything like that. No. I was going to say, did that ever go on, did that ever go on film? <laughs> no, it didn't. I, I, do, I do have it. No, actually, I've probably, probably deleted all that stuff, all that content now. Because as you know, you need so much storage, don't you? I've, I'm just going through that now. I've got, geez, I must have about 50 terabytes worth of, of external hard drives, like five or six different hard drives. Serious? And w yeah, and, and one of them, I've, I bought a big 20 terabyte or 24 terabyte um, dual book thing, which was going to be my sort of backup drive. And it's just, it's just shat itself basically. So I'm like, oh, oh no. there's about there's about nine terabytes of footage on it. Oh no! <laughs> well, you can't get it off. It works every now and then, but I know from previous experience that this only oh, goes right. one way. You know, eventually it just, eventually it just doesn't. Is it, no, not it solid skips state? all the time. No, I I use state? I use little solid states to edit on, but then I I. Once I've finished editing a project and it's done and the vid is published, I take yeah. that whole, all the footage and the, the complete project and I move it across onto like a standard external hard drive because yeah. they're cheaper. They're much, you know, 50 yeah. terabytes of, of SSD is a you considerable can't, amount of Wonga. They are, but you can't take the, what, what do they call the, the hard drive that aren't SSDs, you know, disc ones? What are they called? I, I, I don't know. I just um, call them nor normal. Normal, <laughs> normal drives, yeah. So you, you can't take those on road trips because they can become damaged if they get knocked. That, that's uh, what I, happened on my yeah. on my world trip. Same thing. I, I All the footage up to... I got to South Korea and the, the external hard drive that I had shit itself 
and I, I lost all that data until I managed to recover yeah. about seventy percent of it when I got when I got back to the UK. But it cost me about two grand to get that done. Wow. Yeah, I, I've, I've got a sand disc. Um, I'm looking mm. at it now. I'm not. I can't can't show show, show it on camera because it's plugged in. And I need to eject it, don't you? But I've got a little sand disc SSD, two terabyte thing. Bloody expensive. That's what um, I've got. Yeah, the little one with the like the orange orange little... keyring. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're good though. It, yeah, they're ever so good. Yeah. Whenever you carry your Mac around, you've got this little thing flapping yeah. from the side of your laptop. Yeah, yeah. You. But, um, yeah. yeah, it is good. But I still think for my next road trip, I'm just going to well because I sell SD cards as part of the dash cam, so I have loads of SD cards here anyway. But obviously, right. they cost money as well. But I will. I think I'm just going to have an SD card for every day for every device now. Okay. It yeah, seems yeah, yeah. crazy because you do still have to waste time taking the SD card out of devices, putting it into your Mac, uh, into your reader, transferring it across to your SSD. And that, mm. you know, and whilst your mates, mates were really down in the first yeah. bottle, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. And it means you don't need to take the laptop with you, do you? Because I, you know, I take my laptop with me everywhere and it, it weighs a bloody ton. So I've got my wife. Are we rolling? Because my, my wife's here. She's a. Uh, Let's say hello. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to be Can on camera. Hello. Hello. She's on Hi. <laughs> How are you? How are You're you? in the gym. I'm, I'm good. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, I like your beard. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. <laughs> you brush it. Uh, you have to. It's terrible. On it. Well, obviously, I, I have nothing up here anymore. But um, yeah, this this takes it. more. It makes takes more work than my hair ever did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'll leave you too. I just thought I'd come and say hello. Nice to meet you. And we're back in the room. Oh, I, I'm getting old. I, I'm definitely getting old. My bladder is terrible, especially when I've had a beer. God. I did go in anyway, the so. <laughs> You did? Yeah. Good. Well, that's that now, isn't it? We'll, we'll be going every 20 minutes now. Right. So that was question yeah. three. Let's go on with the next one. Tractor Paul, hi to both of you. Hope you're both well. All good, thank you, Paul. Just wanted to say thanks to Steve, great products and vids. I fitted a D4 bundle and an Inov K2, all doing well, and thanks again. Ah, nice, nice. I hope you got them from Steve then, Paul. Ah, next question. I've just seen who it's from. I don't know if you're uh, aware of this. Pete English, does that name ring a bell? Right. It, it, Pete it does ring a bell, yeah. Pete, yeah. Pete has a bit of a reputation for his his style of question for oh the podcast. God, okay. So, uh, yeah, get ready for this. Hi, guys. Hope you're both fit and well. Well, I'm, I'm well, Pete. I'd say I'm well. Did you know there's an actual job where people test and taste dog food? If you found out your partner had a secret second job that they absolutely loved and didn't want to give it up, would you rather it be an exotic dancer, an adult toy tester, or the worst of all, a traffic warden. And my wife just left the room. I don't think you... <laughs> so, hey, what's the dog food thing got to do with all that? I think I think that was that was just setting us up. That's all that is. Okay, right, it's, yeah. Right. It's to throw you, I think. So you find out your partner's got a secret second job. What is yeah. the worst option that could be for you an exotic dancer an adult toy tester or the worst of all a traffic warden easy for me well thing is i've got no problem with any of those jobs <laughs> but Do you i not? think i'd have more, more I, I think i'd have more problem if it's secret <laughs> Because <laughs> thinking, why, why, why couldn't you tell me? You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm very open-minded. So um, I don't know. Well, what's what's your answer then? It's a traffic warden. I, I wouldn't go the same. I yeah. said the same, but I, I don't want people thinking, "What's wrong with being a traffic warden? Is it, <sighs> are you too good to be a traffic warden?" I don't want people thinking that. <laughs> um, I mean, I was a copper for. 18 yeah. years I'm used to people hate, uh, hating me you know if you take that job yeah if you take that job on then you you've got to accept the fact you're going to attract a, a lot of flack and yeah. and and I I don't yeah I no out of all those jobs I wouldn't care if they were an exotic dancer because yeah. again 
you could enjoy that yourself, couldn't you? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be caring if the, if they were an adult toy tester because again, you could have that for your advantage too. Traffic warden. There's no good going to come of that, is there? Unless no, people park okay. outside your house all the time. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great question from Pete English. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Chris Kemp. Hi, guys. If you only had three grand for a second bike, what would it be? And Bruce, is it true if you call a police officer mate, it's like poking a hungry Rottweiler with a stick and why? Yes, I'll answer that one. Yes, why? it depends why? how you say it. It depends how you say it, because you 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 get you get people who they've they're blatantly in the wrong. You've caught them out for doing something, and they either try to be your absolute best mate and call you mate, uh -huh. or or they're really trying to wind you up, and they they you know they're blatantly lying to you, and they call you mate again. And that will just get that will just get a copper's back up, definitely. So really? I mean, yeah, it it depends how you say it. It really does depend how you say it. If you're the type of person that uses mm. mate all the time and it just rolls off the tongue, then yeah, no problem at all. But some people some people just have a way of dropping it in that's that's quite inflammatory. Sounds sounds weird, but when you're in yeah. that situation, you're like, mm, you're taking the mick now. Yeah. Do you think it's along I, the I, same? Do you think it's along the same sort of lines of when? Because I've always been in sales. Yeah, you know, it's always been my own companies, but I, I've always been selling. And every now and then you'll um, I've got to be careful. I say this, but you'd have someone. <laughs> you do have to be careful, though, don't you? Um, yes. You, you'd have someone say, um, uh, you, you, "You do me your your best price, my friend," and they're calling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, uh -huh. You're my friend. Mm -hmm. I don't know you. <laughs> yeah. How am I yeah. your friend? And sometimes that wind me up, and it wouldn't be because they're a different race. It's just because I'm thinking, I don't know you. I've never met you. I don't know anything about you. And you're saying I'm, I'm already your friend, and you're, you're trying to, you're saying yeah. that to try and get a discount. Yes. <laughs> you know, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it, it works. Set, you know, along the same sort of path. yeah, and it, and it works the other way as well. Like I've, I can remember in my previous life stopping and dealing with somebody in the street and I'll go, listen, bud, you know, I use bud all the time. It just, it, it's, it just rolls off my tongue. Or you go, listen, mate, there's only two ways we can deal with this. And, and I've had other people go, I'm not your mate. And I totally understand that. I, I, I get that. But, you know, conversely, I've said that to people as well when, when they've said that to me. So yeah, I, I get it. I understand oh. it. What did you call me not long ago there? Oh, I think I called you a prick, didn't I? <laughs> Was it a prick? Was right. that right? I'm gonna, uh, right, so I'm, I'm, I'm now speaking to everyone here. Right. And you took, so proper, Bruce, and I, you took proper offence. Bloody, bloody did. So Bruce and I were talking on Instagram, <laughs> and uh, I haven't shown it on any of my videos, but I've got this really cool new drone, which I know he really, really wants badly. Yeah. And yeah. we, were, we, were, we were chatting j j just on private messenger or on, on Instagram and everything. And he called me a prick. I was like, uh, so I, resp I responded saying, I think that was meant for someone else. And he said, That's no, right. it was for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, honestly, like that that yeah. is just, that's like a term of endearment back in Scotland. Wow. Depends how that's you say it, said, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. obviously when you type it, there, there's no... You know, you can't you can't hear any. Uh, oh, what's the word? Yeah. In, in 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 inflection. You can't hear any. You can't hear how I'm meaning it, can you? Like if I yeah. was to see you in person, I'd be like, "Ah, oh, you prick! What are you doing?" It's just. Wow. It's like a. It's a term of endearment up north, like mum jokes yeah. in Scotland. Mum jokes are just second nature, but I found so, down here, blimey, people so, take. They so, take so mum jokes to heart. So if I start holding this up, is it gonna? <laughs> oh, you, you prick. Know? <laughs> yeah. I bought props, you know. I, 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 How, I've got, I've got props here. How are you finding that, that folks? That's the Sky Dio Two. If you're not aware, yeah. it is awesome. Is it as good as it looks in the videos? It is great. So I, t I already told you I was riding the bike through the woods the other day. So mm -hmm. that we didn't take the drone for that because we had a, 
a proper film crew. Well, Tom Boombox was doing all the video videoing and stuff. So that was all like creamy, buttery <laughs> B-roll, you know, that sort yeah. of stuff. I know yeah. you're a P Peter McKinnon. Um, Absolutely. Uh, view it, subscriber and stuff, yeah. Because sometimes I'll, I'm looking at Peter McKinnon stuff and I can see T-Port 1. He like, likes it. <laughs> so wow. buttery B-roll. It's very, very much a Peter McKinnon thing, isn't it? But um, I was in those woods uh, last week with my youngest daughter and we literally took it in there and just set it on and these woods that no leaves on the trees lots of little thin branches perfect recipe for crashing a drone yeah it yeah just found a way through the whole lot it is amazing stunning isn't it stunning. yeah it really is good yeah uncrashable I, I, drone well i i think it's absolutely stunning however it scares the life out of me because you know, as, as soon as I saw it, what flashed in my head was Terminator. That's what flashed in my head. I was like, if yeah. someone weaponizes that, we're all screwed. And lo and behold, Skydio wow. now do a lot of work with the, the American military and their, their mm. law enforcement and emergency services. And you just think, oh, yeah. man, that that totally autonomous drone, fit it with facial recognition. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I have my, because of lockdown being eased up a little bit, and uh, my eldest daughter, I haven't seen her since before Christmas, and she was over last weekend, which is fabulous. So mm. she's 19, and um, I've got the Skydio 2 out, and I said, look, do you want to play my, my, my new toy? Mm. He goes, well, what's it do then? What's it do then? He goes, well, just hold this. So I gave her the little beacon, yeah, and... Uh, launched it and uh, I said, right, it's now following you. I says, you try and hide. Yeah, you, you see in my front garden on, on videos, yeah. I says, you've got all this area <laughs> well, the, going. The, the one, is that the one the guy landed the helicopter in that front garden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got the side orchard Different as well. It says, it says, hide anywhere. Don't, don't go inside the house though, but yeah. run anywhere. You've got the orchard, you've got the tennis courts, you've got the front garden. Yeah, you try and hide. She couldn't hide. And it was kind of scary because I set it on to be in front of her as well. So uh -huh. as soon as she started running in a different direction, it would then come around the front of her and just stop right in front of her. And it, it is, it's scary. It's thinking, wow. Because it's got the, the um, artificial intelligence chip in it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she did. She 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 gave it. So she she got under some bushes and she she went through some some close trees and uh, where it couldn't get through, but then it just, it realized it couldn't get through. It just jumped over the top and met her on the other side. It was just stunning. crazy. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. For, folks, cool if, you've, if, you've, if you've if you've not seen this yet, check it out, skydio, S-K-Y-D-I-O.com. It is phenomenal. Yeah. I, I want one, absolutely. There's issues, <laughs> you know, you can't really, you can't really, well, we'll not go there, but. <laughs> Well, the, well the, the, the fact is that they're not selling them in the UK, so you, no, so you can't buy them in the UK. You have to know someone in America and don't don't go any further. It. Don't go any further. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just don't go yeah. any further because right. right. there might be one making an appearance in some vids soon. <laughs> You can you can edit all this anyway. <laughs> exactly. No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't edit the podcast at all. Oh, don't but you? Check oh. out. No, 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 no. It's just, just as oh. it. Well, once I had to edit it. Once. And I won't that go into by any chance? No, 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 no. No, oh, no, really? it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. It was it was an outside influence on one of oh. the guests that I had. I can't go into it. Anyone that listens to the podcast regularly or watches the video will probably be able to figure it out. But, uh, yeah, I... I was oh, okay. I was I was asked to change something by an outside agency. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um uh oh yeah, first part of Chris Kemp's question. Hi guys, if you only had three grand for a second bike, what would it be? So three grand for yeah, another yeah. bike. Yeah, it would be going back to the R the R one hundred, an old R one hundred. Oh, okay. I don't think that actually I don't think three grand would be enough. No, I think I'd need more than that, wouldn't I? Some old dirt bike, because I, like I, I find myself watching the reels on Instagram of these 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 Husqvarna's Hus, Husqvarna's. I don't know how to pronounce it. Like yeah, the, yeah. the the 350s, the 450s, and and I, and I watch um, girl on a bike, and God, she's talented on a bike, isn't she? Um, and I watch all that as well. And, and 
I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I take ownership of a Husqvarna tra- trail bike in the next few months. Cause... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm with you on that. I, I, I would like a little off-road bike to sort of do some work on it and and start learning how to off-road because yeah. I make a big deal about hating off-road. I don't hate off-road. It's just because I don't I don't know what I'm doing, so I I feel uncomfortable when I'm when I'm off-road. But I see mm. I see the appeal. You know, you watch mm. you watch Vanessa on on her bike. You watch Ad Linden Poskett on. You watch what they're doing. It's absolutely stunning. Another one. Um, so yeah, I would I would like to get better. Yeah, I think a little a little off-road bike, definitely. Yeah. Right, next question. The Mad Leprechaun. Ah, this is Mart with the sidecar. To both, tell us something that you have done and are really proud of and no one knows. Also, just for fun, do double glazing salesmen go window shopping at weekends? <sighs> Don't know about that last one, Mart, but something you've done and you're really proud of but nobody knows. Something that I'm really proud of that nobody knows. Hmm. Then I'd be breaking that, wouldn't I? It's a good question, though. Yeah, it is. Um, <sighs> something I'm really proud of, and no one knows. Maybe, yeah. Well, I hit ten thousand subscribers. Um, I know it's nothing like your fifty thousand, but Honestly, I hit ten thousand subscribers, and, and I went on a little spending spree at Bell Staff. I'm a bit of a Bell Staff monkey. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but that, that's what I like to wear. And um, yeah, I was quite. I was, I was really reach up for that. 10,000 is a massive yeah. like stage absolutely well, nearly 11,000 now so hmm. <laughs> honestly that first 10,000 can take forever can't it and uh, hmm. i found i found that i found that jump from like 10 to 20 happened really quite quick and then it felt like it dragged forever to get to 30 yeah. and then all, all of a sudden i'm at 50 and now like my channel's just i don't know the last this last week it's just just died. I don't know what's going on. Had a whole load of subscribers. Yeah, I've I've lost like two hundred odd subscribers over the last couple of days. The views have gone from like well on a bad day about ten thousand over the last sort of day, and and now they're like a couple of hundred. I don't I don't know what's going on. Well, you, you need to stop stop saying that as well because <laughs> you need to even if things are bad you've got to give people the impression that things are great all the time well, because yeah. people want to follow yeah no yeah. The, no that's true that is true and I'm, and I'm also a firm believer of of the power of of a positive mindset yeah. you know does does it does it have an outside influence to change things uh, no i don't think so but on you yes i think it does and i think if you if you take a positive mindset like you were saying earlier if you take a positive mindset towards something and you're like right that's that's my objective and i'm i'm striving towards that and i'm going to make that happen if you put everything you have into that then chances are you're going to make that happen aren't you of course there'll be obstacles I'm coming in your way thing. But you just work your way around them, don't you? And you figure it out, and eventually you attain whatever it is that you're after. Yeah, and I, think... I, used to, I used to do a little. Sorry, no, go on. No, no, go on. Please go on. I used to do when I used to go and do my um, public speaking uh, at universities. I used to. It wasn't my own material, to be fair, but it's something that resonated with me. And because people wanted to know what it takes to be successful, what it, what it takes mm. to like achieve stuff. And yet I said, well, you've really got to take the mentality of the ability to breathe. So I won't, I won't go through the whole thing right now because I, I can draw it out for like five minutes. But um, it's about this um, wise old man trying to teach this young, this young lad who he says he wants to be successful. He thinks he wants to be successful. He wants to be successful just like this old, very successful billionaire. And he tries, and so what they do is they walk out into the sea and he holds his head under the water and he's basically drowning him. And he says, what the hell are you doing? And this guy can't get any air. This lad can't get any air. And eventually he gets up, he gets through, he does whatever's necessary to get his head above water and take a breath. So that really resonates with me because he then said to the young lad, who was ne- nearly died, <laughs> he nearly drowned there. He said to him, he says, right, he says, the day you want to be successful as bad as you want to breathe you know so mm. it's um whether that's relevant or not i don't know no no it absolutely is yeah, yeah definitely mm. i think i think that's probably what the difference is between 
those who those who attain well it is without a shadow of a doubt it's the difference between those who attain their goals consistently yeah. and those who 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 don't is is that those but who you can never take it give far. up you can take yeah. it too far so yeah, true. i was true the thing is, maybe I, maybe I, I really, when you asked me to come on here, I was, I was like, well, this is probably a really good opportunity because I don't like talking about myself so much on my own videos. I don't mm. want to be talking about my last business. And, you know, I get people asking me, you know, how can you afford that house? And I don't mind, you know, if someone asks me, but I'm not going to go on there. And But it, and people, some people are saying, you know, stop putting your house on there. You know, you're showing off. And mm. I'm thinking, well, this is my home. This is where mm. I live. I, I'm, I'm not trying to show it off or anything. But um, what was the point I was trying to make? I was about, what I was about to say. I was about to say. About, about, quite, quite yeah, valid. about coming on here. About coming on here. Oh, you know, I had a point to make then. I'd have, it's, <laughs> um, it's a bit. <laughs> On my third, if you if, if you knew my mates, that I'm a very very cheap night out, man. Very, very cheap night out. <laughs> um, You'll be stripping soon. But it is warm in here. It's very very hot in here. Very 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 hot. Um, so <laughs> it's like I think right. I think it's uh, tw- tw- twenty nine degrees in this room. It's very Jesus very very hot. Yeah, that is your pool hot. room, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, it's there, there any room I can get my bike into. Well, unless I go put it in the lounge, but it's. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, so I thought it was perfect. I just rode the bike round and uh, yeah, put, put it through the double doors. What, yeah. what I'd like every listener and viewer to do right now is just pop out and check what temperature your pool room is, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let's go back to Mertz, to the Mad Leprechaun's first part of his question. Tell us something you've done and you're really proud of and no one knows because we've we skirted that, haven't we? We didn't answer it. Well, I did. I said. I said the ten thousand because it's very, very recent. The ten thousand. Oh, ten thousand. Yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm very, very proud of it. So, um, and and not only that, it's a, a lot of people will think I'm probably like, you know, um, oh, I was going to say, the, the the thing that I really focus on within my business because I've mm. got a trust pilot um, account. So, and you can't fake a trust pilot account, and so no, it's no, it's no. basically the. The, the customers who are using actually buying from me and they leave reviews on there and that's um so for me it actually went to 4.9 so five is the highest it went to 4.9 for about a day wow um a couple of days ago and it's gone back to 4.8 again because someone was oh. but it's because it's i've become a victim of kind of, of my own success in a bike thing uh, because I can't, this week especially, being a four-day working week, and I took time out to spend my family at Easter. That meant there's a backlog. You've got people who just don't understand. They send an email mm. on Good Friday. They don't get a response till Sunday. They're giving you grief. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and some of them have probably watched this right now. Um, I, actually, do you know what? I've got one customer, and I'm not going to mention his name, but he knows who And he, another thing. <laughs> he knows who he is. <laughs> and, 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 and as soon as he watches it, he'll, he'll be on WhatsApp because he's got my number. He's a really good customer and a really nice bloke. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I actually like him. We chat a lot. So we're like, we're kind of those mates who have never met and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But he, he reached out to me um, and asked me a question about something. And I was so busy. Uh, I, I just went back to him, bearing in mind, I've been speaking to him for quite a few weeks. Uh, or months, if you like, uh, and I, w- I went back to him and spoke to him like a mate because we, you know, we chat like mates. I said to him, "Can't c- I'm t- too busy to answer your question right now, but I come back to you after three p.m., of which I did. I actually got back to him by two thirty, by which mm-hmm. time, and he doesn't realise it, it, it has offended me a little bit. By which time he says, "Sorry, um, I, fa- I found that was quite arrogant of you that you um that that that, that you, you're too busy to talk to me." You know, I was so busy getting stuff out the door to, to, to meet yeah, FedEx, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, and I, I bought it elsewhere now. And I, I did. And, and, you know, it did. It's, 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 sorry, I've upset you, Steve. I, I, I said no, but he's going to watch this now. Sorry, it's part, it's the drink as well. So the truth comes out, doesn't it? <laughs> it's going to get leery now. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it is the thing about, it's the thing about the written word. And, I, and I'm, I'm as guilty as the next one, you know, and that, I I do I read comments that people leave on the videos mm. and on social media and and all this sort of stuff. I I do. You're always told don't read the comments, don't read the comments. But I I want mm. to engage with people. You know, I've I've done yeah. it from 
day one. And I, I maintain that no matter what level I ever get to in terms of subscribers, I'll always do it. I'll always do my best to try and answer every single comment if I can. But you know what it's like. You read a comment and you can take that, like you can take that comment at least two different ways, if not yeah. 20, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, and it depends what mood you're in, doesn't it? When you read it and, and I've it done it. And it, I, I've just found something we were talking about earlier, this, this last lockdown in particular, and, and in this last month, especially, I've just, I've just felt like, oh, you know, just in a real downer and and there just feels like there's a lot more negativity around in the comments and, and it and it gets to you doesn't it when you when you're reading yeah. them and i've i've found myself biting back at people and then i said it before in a podcast you might you know you bite back thinking that they've said one thing and then they reply and go well i didn't like me calling you a prick you know i didn't i didn't mean yeah. any of I didn't no, mean no, any no, offence no. about it at all. And, and I've had people with that where I've replied thinking that they were having a dig and they're like, no, no, I, I wasn't I wasn't having a dig. And you're like, oh, God, I'm sorry. It's it's just part and parcel of the written word, I think. It's it's not a great form of communication, is it? No, it's not, no. Absolutely not, no. But the, 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 so the, thing, the thing for me, I mean, getting back to the point, is that I... I, I don't I say as, as like advice if you're running a, a business and you might be struggling is that don't don't focus on the money don't don't focus on making a profit you focus mm. on uh, literally being successful and being really good at what you're doing yeah. uh, so for me I take a lot of pride with my trust pilot scoring um, so that means more to me than the pound notes in the bank but mm -hmm. then the pound notes get looked after it, it, it's a byproduct so the success comes with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th that's true. But it's also like, like for me, I'm at the very early stages, really, of of building my brand, of building my business, and I I sort of just about break even. If, if truth be told, for the last sort of four or six months, I'm not breaking even. You know, I'm relying on money that I saved before I, I left the old bill, and it's yeah. it, it it's hard not to be concentrating on the on the money because you're like I've got a mortgage to pay, I've got bills to pay. You know, yeah, you know, and that yeah. that that is a that's tough because it it starts not becoming a passion; it starts becoming a necessity. And I I do think yeah. that's dangerous because you can see that has a negative impact on the quality of the work that you produce. Definitely, because you're you're not feeling upbeat, you're not feeling like full yeah. of enthusiasm, and that I can help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it portrays when on video that portrays like people are like, "Are you all right? You don't seem your normal jovial self." And you're like, uh. <laughs> "Got to put so your war paint on." Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do. It's all um, it's a, it's a very interesting journey becoming self-employed when you've been, you know, inherently sort of employed by the state like I have for nearly twenty years. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're you're now self-employed, and it's like, what is this? What is going on here? <laughs> yeah. yeah, big learning curve. I'm enjoying it. Oh, I am enjoying it. Can, can, can I ask you how old are you? I have no idea because the beard, I think, messes. With, you don't ask me to guess. <laughs> okay, um, you probably right. will not think this, but I am forty-four. I really do you know? Yeah. Right, so I asked that question because so you're younger than me. <laughs> you're younger than me. So I, yeah. I've got to be careful how I come across it. <laughs> so because the beard does age you, you know, you, you know that. that you, I'm not trying to be horrible, but it does. It does. So I, I generally thought you. <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> I've had people say that they thought I was in my like mid to late fifties, sixties, all sorts. And it, 60s. it's oh no, no yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. It's weird because when I shave the beard off, I have a total baby face. I have a proper baby. I know. Face. I've, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, thing, I, I, was, I was that guy who went on your YouTube. You know, you can't watch it all, can you? Well, yeah, you could, right. but I, you haven't got time. But you go, you just go back to the first one. Just go back to the first one. Right. And yeah, I, I watched that one of you. I'm thinking, oh, look at him without a beard. Does he look weird? <laughs> <laughs> but then that is, that is, well, that's 11 years ago now. No, yeah. 10 years ago was the trip. I think probably the earliest video on there is about 2010. I think it's a really bad mobile phone clip yeah. of me with a, a map up on the wall. I think that's the first vid that's on there. And uh, yeah, that's that was 2010. God, that feels like a lifetime ago. Um, 
Mark, I'm trying to think. What have I done that I'm really proud of and no one knows? Um, there's a lot of stuff in my previous work life that I'm very proud of. But, well, I can't... It wouldn't be right, I think. Things, uh, on, a, on a very generic sense, I used to take pride in, in, in doing some things in that job that perhaps you would think... What? Like, when you have to, there's a thing called a death message, you know, when you have to tell the next of kin or the loved one that their other half has passed away, so they've been involved in an accident and passed away. It's horrible. Absolutely. It's, it's a horrible part of that job, but it has to be done. And you have to do that in, in, a, in a good way because that has a huge impact. That could be life-changing to somebody you know and you've got to have compassion you've got to be professional about it you can't you can't sit there and babble your words and burst into tears or skirt around the issue you know but the same case you can't be blunt about it you've got to be compassionate and and i i sort of i i think i used to i would definitely take pride in in how i how i handled that aspect of the job but it's not something you can you know, you can't turn around to go and somebody and go. So tell me, how do you, how did that go down then? How do you feel about that? Was could I have done that better? You know, you can't you can't do that, can you? So I think, in a weird sort of, in a weird way, that's something I'm I'm quite proud of in that I feel like I I did my job properly in those circumstances. Does that make sense? It, yeah, it does. Yeah. You, you, you actually touched. You're touching on something quite personal to me. You are here. Oh, I do apologise, man. Sorry. No, no, don't, 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 don't <clears throat> apologise. Um, um, we're, we're allowed to like go off on tangents, aren't we? Of course, of course. If you want um, to, you don't need to by any stretch. No, no, it's fine. So it's, it, this isn't when I say personal. When I say personal, it's um, so it's my dad. So mm. um, uh, so actually, while well, you know while well, we're on subjects for them, um, because so, a lot of people don't realise. So we cast our minds back. How many months now? Is it 18 months ago? So do you remember when COVID hadn't hit England, but it mm. was in China and it was in Japan and there was yep. a cruise ship in Japan. Yeah. And they had that, yeah. the, the, the old couple on the Japanese cruise ship. They yes. had that mom and dad. Oh yeah, my God. That? I don't know if you were that. Yeah. No, no. So that was mom and dad. So, so, so they, were, they were two of the first Brits. Uh, to catch, to actually contract COVID nineteen, but they were on the crew that they were on that Japanese cruise ship. Oh. Um, so they and they got um, admitted to um, a hospital in Japan, and then eventually I got them back at some point in February, March of t- twenty twenty, uh, just before England went into lockdown. So mm. um, yeah, um, so so glad that they're alive. You know, they got through. My dad had a stroke as well, but um, later on in 2020 as well. But it came through that as well. But the, the reason what you're saying there resonates with me because my dad set a company up. Um, let's say set a company up. He, so so my, my dad's a reverend. So man mm. of the cloth, cloth, cloth. <laughs> that beer's really working. <laughs> <laughs> a man of the cloth, and. Um, you know, I'm so proud of my old man. He's, uh, he's, you know, yeah. But he's, um, his speciality, what he's really good at is what, what you just spoke about just then. So he actually came out of the church. Oh, I can't remember dates and years and stuff, but, but what he's kind of like embraced and does very well is funerals. Mm. So he is a celebrant. Have you heard that term celebrants? So, no, no. Um, so, so he, so a celebrant is someone who can marry people and also do funerals. Um, so he actually married me and my my, my second wife, my my, my wife. <laughs> so um, and it was lovely. It's nice and personal. So that's lovely. But what he's really good at is the funerals. So um, and 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 part of that of um, his job, which he doesn't do so much now, but he's trained up two hundred and fifty odd celebrants who work for him now. Um, who do what do he, he kind of trains them um, and they have to deal with um so oh, I've got to be careful because I don't, I don't want to come across like a blubbering mess <laughs> but he trains them how to deal with um child um deaths you know like, oh jeez that's that sort yeah. of thing yeah and and there was a time when he asked me when he knew I sold my company and I was having fun with bikes and everything he says sorry 
you know, this is perfect. You, you're perfect for it, Steve. You come in and take over the reins. I said, there's no way yeah. I can go into people's homes and talk yeah. about, you know, and do that. I'm just going to be crying. I'm just like, cause I'm, I'm so sensitive. I am actually a really sensitive guy. So I'll be yeah. like blobbing away. And, uh, uh, but, that, that's a, that, that's one of the things that he's actually uh, excels at um, because you need someone to be able to manage that whole death experience. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I um, I, I used to find anything involving in children. I used to find really really quite hard to deal with because I think at that time when I was sort of involved in the nine 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 response side of policing, my son yeah. was still quite young, and I, I I did find that very hard, very hard to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, but, but if but if you are not, not you know, you're good at what you do right now, the whole team one and everything. But if you if, if you ever are thinking you want to change and you know you're good at that, then when you know my, my old Mel could easily train you up because it's a, <laughs> it's terrible because it, it's it's a it's a really it's a thriving business. Mm. You know, like the death is part of life. Death. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all, all a part of life, and uh, yeah. uh, it, you know, he's he's got um, a couple of hundred people who work underneath him all over the country, um, wow. officiating weddings and funerals, and making them very personal, very personal. And I actually went to a funeral because uh, it's someone in, the, in, the, in in our family, and he had the whole room at the funeral laughing and crying, and you didn't know. You felt bad, you felt guilty, but he was so mm. good at it because he got you laughing because yeah. it was like all about, you know, the pulling out all the good bits about that person. He was like, yeah, it's great. Definitely. I, anyway. I've, you, you know, <laughs> you, you reach a stage in life, don't you, when you, you, you find that you're going to a lot of funerals and I'm sort of there really at the moment. Yeah. And, um, well, obviously not at the moment, but um, it makes such a difference when it's a personal affair and as you said when when there's the light moments of of recollection you know and somebody's there who actually knows that person who's who's passed on and they can relate that to you and if you know them as well you know it's i just find well, it's it it makes it a lot easier to deal with well part, part of the training of the celebrancy stuff he does he, he really makes sure he that the celebrants go in and get to know the family mm. and they mm. ask specific questions so they know the person who passed they know them inside out so when mm. they are delivering that sermon or not sermon when they're delivering that service that, 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 that the whole yeah. funeral thing mm -hmm. yeah you as well sort of thing yeah it's very personal he gets all the all the, the family laughing and crying it's like you walk away thinking that was great. <laughs> it was a funeral, but that was great. You know, yeah, so, yeah. And, then, and then they start crying again. But it's like, what an amazing send off! It's a celebration, though, isn't it, of that of that person's yeah. life, their time there. Right. Anyway, yeah. let's lift yeah. this a lift little it bit. <laughs> Last one of the patron questions, David Bacholtz. Bacholtz, question for you both: What is the most worthwhile upgrades you've made to your tractors? Oh, I got asked this quite recently, actually. I've got a new upgrade here. <laughs> I saw that post. That's very swish. Look at that. That's a Denali beanie, isn't it? Yeah. I don't, I don't think they sell them, though, do they? I've never seen them before. No. Yours is the first one I've ever seen. Yeah. And it's I'm like, I want D4. one. It's a Denali D4 on your head. Isn't that great? <laughs> I insisted. That I... It was part of the deal, because they came over to film. Yeah. And... I, and, and um, Part part of the deal was that they were going to either pay me or give me products. I I took the products, and mm. I said, "But I want merch. I want merch. I want I want a Denali hat. I've got a I've got a Denali buff. Nice. Oh, I've got a buff. Nice. Great. You know, like it. Um, I've I've got so a set of Denalis. I've got a set of Denalis that I I have to install on the bike. Nip, nip, sorry, rival. Nippy okay, Normans gave me, a, they gave me a set of. I'm not sure which ones they are. I can't remember. They're not the great big ones. I, I prefer the smaller sort of spotlight ones. It's those ones, whatever they are. I've, I've, I've seen them on the side in some of your videos. They're D2s. Oh, have you? <laughs> D2s, are they? <laughs> I yeah, think so, I've, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got to install. Well, I'm not going to do a. I'm not going to do an installation vid of it because. Yeah, that's that's your territory. I'll leave you to do that. I just need to think of a way of incorporating them into some content. So I don't know. I'll have to figure that one out. But anyway, most worthwhile upgrade for you 
Is there one in particular or, say, two? I've got to say it's the Lions, I'm afraid. Yeah? So it, well, yeah, I, I think yeah, it's, it's, it's being seen. So mm. one of the things, uh, I, know, I know I sound like I've, I'm wearing my, my Denali hat right now, mm-hmm. so I'm taking it off. But um, when you end up getting a set of Denalis on your bike, because you haven't put them on there yet, but when, when you've got them on there and they are bright, and I've just done a, I've just done a, a video comparison, which you probably haven't seen yet, between the clear water and the Denali, and the clear water is so expensive, and the Denali's like gets getting up for half the price, but the Denali is so much brighter. It's like, hang on, mm-hmm. what, what am I getting for this clear water mm-hmm. uh, when that's supposed to, that's supposed to be the, like the top notch, premium, top shelf thing? Um, but when you actually get them on your bike, and you, in the daytime, you will notice cars treat you differently. You'll see yeah. cars making different decisions at junctions. You, but you shouldn't use it. It's, it's like I won't wear a high vis out of principle because I believe it can subconsciously give you a false sense of security. Mm. So if you are subconsciously thinking, well, they can see me. Well, then the chances are they might, they might not be able to see you. They haven't seen Mm. you and they're still going to put that anyway. So I'd rather assume no one can see me and then I will ride in a way that I, I know I'm protecting myself. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, getting eye contact, seeing a, seeing a turn of a wheel, the way the way the car moves. It's hard mm-hmm. to explain it to, to to people who don't ride bikes as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, true. It's true. Until you're riding, you 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 don't realize you know you don't realize how um you know you, you kind of understand how how cars move and you, you <clears throat> predict what they're going to do, can't you? You're constantly looking for any sort of reaction from. I, that driver in front, the one coming towards, the one that's behind, the one you're overtaking, you're constantly looking for some sort of reaction from them, whether that, as you said, whether that's a simple move of the head towards the mirror, if it's, you know, over yeah. the shoulder, anything, or movement in the road, anything, just to just to let you know, okay, they've, they've seen me, or I think they've seen me. I get yeah. what you're saying about the lights, because I... I've always had the BMW spotlights on my last two GSs, and on this one I didn't, and I felt totally naked on the bike. I feel really yeah. quite vulnerable, yeah. And it, w- well, without you've got having a lone rider guard as well, haven't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so that really takes it down a bit. Yeah, yeah. which should put something on there, really. I, I didn't realise how much that tints sort of that tones down that headlight, but it 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 does quite it does quite significantly lower the the intensity of that of that beam i think yeah, yeah. for the daylight certainly um but for it's, me, worth, it's worth putting on it's worth putting on there because it protects the uh the light behind it yeah, isn't we, it you don't want to end up thousand, that's a grand for that new headlight if you crack it it's, it's i think it's over a grand actually it's just Is over it? oh jesus christ bmw um yeah uh David, for me, I've said this before when somebody asked, the most worthwhile upgrade for me was the fender extender and the mudsling at the back. Just, I mean, it, I mean, it's a cheap bit, well, it's not a cheap bit of plastic if you get the mudsling ones. You can get the, the cheapo versions, can't you, on, on eBay. But um, mm. yeah, I mean, it's. I think for both of them, you're talking 180 quid, 200 quid. But it, the front fender extender just extends your front mudguard by about, what four or five inches and it just yeah. stops all the crud getting battered up against your your engine plate on the bike and then the mud sling sort of stops all the crud coming off the back wheel going against your shock and it you know makes a big big difference definitely yeah and no, i agree with that actually because i've um i've got the 719 option on this and i haven't got the mud sling or the extender and i've, I've only done 100 miles on it and my beautiful billet aluminium cnc oh. machined breastplate is caked in mud so, oh no, not that bad it's just a bit of dust no <laughs> that that billet accessory pack on the gs is gorgeous mm. absolutely gorgeous. my mate pete english the guy that has those random questions he came down yeah. here to have my other mate pete apply the ceramic coating to his brand new uh, gs rally oh, yeah. and he he had the full billet pack put on it and it just looked amazing stunning yeah, this has got the full billet. It's um, I do like it. That's some. Yeah. That's a fair bit of coin extra. That is wow. 
Fair play to you. Right, uh, that is the patron questions done. How are you doing for time? Are you okay for another sort of half hour or so? I'm good, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Right, lovely. So we'll move across to uh, Instagram. So that's at teapot1insta. And you're on Instagram as well, aren't you? Is it just a bike thing? I am. Just a bike yeah. thing, yeah. A bike lovely. Thing. There'll be... There'll be links to, to all of Steve's socials down in the, the description, folks. So first question, at SamVincent92. Can he put me in touch with the guy who picked up his GSA in a helicopter? I'm sure either me or my missus would happily have a sugar daddy in exchange for a Super Duke or a Multistrada V4. So if you don't know what we're talking about there, folks, um, Steve had a, a customer or a friend who, who arrived at uh, his workplace his home in a helicopter, didn't he? He came to get our. Yeah. You you had his new GS, didn't you? I Don't did. You yeah, he, he wasn't. He wasn't a friend. I thought well, he probably is a friend now. Um, you know, but, um, he, he was um, actually. I, I'm not going to mention names. He he was okay being on video. Um, so hence why you can see him in the video that I um yeah. that I on there. But um, it's funny actually because he. I get a lot of customers ask me to call them. And I, I can't call everyone because yeah. I, I regard myself as a nice guy and I can't help but start talking. And before you know it, a five minute call ends up being a half hour call and you don't Absolutely. get any work done. But he, mm -hmm. he asked for a call because he was in hospital. So <laughs> uh, I thought, okay, well, what was the deal here then? And I, I, I think he just like had, had a bike accident as well. So he's, he's like, and he's telling me about, oh, yeah, I'll be, I came for a bike, I've cracked my hip or something or other. He goes, but I've just bought a brand new GS from from my hospital bed. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's quite interesting. Yeah, I've, got, I've got this new GS and, and I've just seen your videos. I'm sitting here procrastinating in bed and um, I want you to fit it all out. I want, I want you to do it all. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of like how it happened. And then he saw another video. He says, oh, just seen your pad. He says, would you mind awfully if I can land my, my chopper on your, on your lawn? <laughs> <laughs> land your chopper where? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, on, your, on your lawn. And I said, I'm absolutely fine. And the thing is, where he landed, there actually is a helipad there already. So <laughs> I, I only bought this place. Um, we moved in just before Christmas. So, um, and the, the guy who used to live here, he passed away four years ago. Um, he, um, his, his family just have, have held on to it for four years, but no one's been living here for four years. So it's kind of, kind of like a, a really perfect opportunity because it's got the barns and, and the courtyard. And there's also some, so another barn, which has already been converted for like several years ago. And they've got tenants in there. So I've got my company, which was looking, or I was looking to take on a commercial property anyway to, and to pay rent. Yeah. And we've got the rent coming in there. So a bike thing pays rent for those barns over there. And then we've got the rent coming in from those two tenants there. Before you know it, the mortgage is paid every month. So it's actually a bit of a no brainer. Fair enough, we've had to tick all the boxes to say we can afford the mortgage and everything. But we found, um, uh, a lender who's quite um, what's the word uh, pragmatic, yeah, um, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and and yeah, so, so it's kind of it's, it's, it's worked its way out. Um, so, you know, so, so it's kind of perfect. So what was I was going to say, so he, so the guy with the chopper, uh, sorry, no, the, the, the person we bought it from, um, he was um, he had done very well. We had a, he had a big betting company which he sold out to Coral back in right. two thousand and. 12 or something. And uh, he was just flying helicopters constantly to his house in Scotland. And I, I, I hear these stories from the groundsman. So we've got a full-time groundsman who works here too, keeping all the grass <laughs> nice and moan. Oh, so, we have such different lives. <laughs> I, I know, but, but, but the thing is what I try to explain to people is, is it, you know, it's not, it's not a case of where, you know, people think, oh, you must be minted. No, not, not, not really. It's a case of, we, we've just made it work. It's a business. We've got the bars, mm -hmm. we've got the cottages, yeah. uh, and we've bought it as a complete set. And then we came in with a cheeky offer, and they said, yeah. yeah. I thought, oh, perfect. <laughs> just, everything just worked out, really. So it's, yeah. um, so the actual net effect of being here is cheaper than living in our old four-bedroom house. 
That's insane. The net effect. That's crazy. Yeah, 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 So, you know, it, it does cost a lot of money to live here, but because of all the money coming in, it's actually yeah, better yeah. to live here. So, yeah, um, so when he said, he can, can we land there? He says, well, there actually is an H in the grass somewhere. You can just about see it sometimes <laughs> where it used to be there. But I, well, I haven't reinstated it. But when I saw that land, I was thinking to myself, how can I get myself in a chopper? Because I can't afford to buy a chopper. Um, but the, the expensive bit is learning how to fly. Yeah. So, and if, and if, if you did own a, a helicopter, let's say a Robinson 22 or a Robinson 44, the, um, you wouldn't be flying it every day. Mm -hmm. So it'd be sitting there, thousands of, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of equipment sat in your garden doing nothing. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking around um, if I could take a share of one. So I, I had the use of one for let's say 30 days of the year. And uh -huh. then I would learn to fly. And then, and then I find a way of, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I, I'm, Steve, I'm not like, yeah. <laughs> if you're serious about that, I have yeah. a contact within the, uh, genuinely who I'll talk to you about off air. I have a yeah. contact in the helicopter world who may well be able to make something like that happen. If you're interested, I can put you in touch. I am, yeah. So, so the thing, thing is, but where I am, where my head is at, I don't know where it's coming across if you read between the lines. I want to take ownership of a helicopter without spending any money. Do you, do you yeah, see yeah, what I'm all, getting? All yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit uh -huh. like when we bought, I bought this house. Where I kind of like showed my wife. I, I was thinking this actually is not going to cost us anything. You know, I know we're going to get this massive, huge mortgage, but the net effect, we're going to be better off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's great for our pensions as well, you know, et cetera, et cetera, as we develop it and we get the bonds built. Because we've got our bank actually crying out for us to develop the bonds. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, crack on, get on with it. Let me lend you the money, you know. Um, well, this is the perfect time then for us because we, we touched on it earlier. You, you have some plans for the bonds and stuff. What's, what's your yeah. plans there then? What is it you want to attain eventually? So the big long barn, which you can see on a lot of my videos, that will be um, a bit, when I say coffee shop, I don't want to be held down that we've got a coffee shop where we've got to be open 24 seven, not 24 seven, but you know, you seven know days mean, a week. Yeah. Uh, Cause this is my home and um, it's quite kind of sacred, you know, it is our home, but um, not sacred, you know what I'm saying? I know, <laughs> you know what, what I mean? mean. I know what you mean. Um, and then the, the bit at the very end, I want to be like a ceramic coating area. So when we get the, the odd customer who's willing to spend that ridiculous amount of money, you know, because you've got your mate who can do it for 300 who, who's, or who's got the best, the best stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah super, super Shield super Auto. Shield yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where, where my mind's, I've got more props, you see. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. That's the second best option. Yeah, yeah, got you, got you. <laughs> but you can't, you can't buy this stuff. You can't actually buy this stuff. Um, as a consumer, you can't buy. You have to um, uh, have a specialist ceramic pro authorized dealer to actually mm -hmm. apply it for you. Anyway, same, the hard thing is to have that is that is that is, that, is that have that down there uh, where people want to have their bikes completely stripped apart so we get to yeah. every, into every nook and cranny. So that would be the ceramic coating bit down there. Then there's another barn at the back, which I want to put my mum and dad in. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like as your parents get a bit older, you start to cherish them a little bit, don't you? I don't know, yeah, it's kind yeah. of weird. Like, there used to be a time where I couldn't stand them, whereas now it's like, you know. <laughs> it, it, it's weird, man, isn't it? Like, my son is... You know, my, my boy is 23, he'll be 24 this year. And he's at that stage where, you know, I mean, I, I haven't spoke to my boy every single day since he was, certainly before he was a teenager. And then it yeah. became like, because I, I, I was down in London, he was up in Glasgow. So it'd be like once a week or every couple of days. Then it becomes like once a month as he, you know, as he becomes a man. And you're like, okay, I understand that. Now he's at the stage where... Like, unless I really hound him, I don't hear from my boy for, you know, probably a couple of months. And you're like, do you not mm. like me? What is going on here? But my dad was saying, you're exactly the same. You were exactly the same at that age where, you know, this is before mm. mobiles. Don't forget, we didn't have mobiles, did we, 20 years ago? Or we mm. were just starting to get them. And uh, I suddenly thought, God, you're right. And But at that time, at that stage in life, you don't think about it, do you? You don't think about how that affects your parents when you, you're not in yeah. touch with them for weeks or months on end. So yeah, the yeah. shoe's on the other foot now and I'm like, what are you up to? Tell me. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you do start to cherish your parents. You are obviously I lost my mum back in two thousand and eight, and um, it definitely. The older I've got, you know, I I, I definitely it sounds bad to say it, but I value my dad so much more now as I'm as I'm getting older. You sort of appreciate them and all that stuff they used to tell you when you were younger and you used to think, oh, shut up, you old fart. Now you're like, oh, yeah, yeah I kind of agree with that now. <laughs> Maybe yeah, you were yeah. talking some sense, who knows? Absolutely, um, yeah. Right. So there was no real question there with Sam. He just, he just wants, he wants a sugar daddy. So if you can put your mate in touch with Sam Vincent, 92, he will, yeah. um, or his wife will, will, will look after your helicopter, mate. Sparrow4994. Hi. Question to you both. Obviously, the GS or GSA are the best bikes in the world. GS, obviously. But what modifications that you have not put on the bike already would you love to add to make it nicer for your pleasure? And also, what also one that is puzzling me and has for ages? How do you get the air inside a tennis ball? Uh, I'm not answering that second part of the question, but what have you not done to a GS or a GSA yet? Your own one that you want to? <laughs> Nothing really, because I just crack on and get it done. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but but but, but there is actually something. I've, did I cover it in a video? I think I covered it in a video when I was test riding the K5. And because you, when I did the K5 video, um, I'm not going to ask you if you've seen it because I know you're a busy man. But when I, when I, when I was test riding, when I, when, I, when I was test riding that K5, you were also witnessing me test riding my bike for the first time too, <laughs> since, since I've done all the mods to it. I was all like, right. oh, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was getting to know, because as soon as I had this delivered, I didn't go for a ride in it. I literally put it in my lounge, stripped it down, and it sat there for six weeks waiting for the, for the, the bars to be powder coated and all the, the panels to be painted. Yeah. And that, that, yeah, took, yeah. A long, that took a long time. Um, and plus trying to run all the mail orders on side of business. It, you know, people were saying, come on, surely you should be ready by now, but no. Anyway, so um, I went out on that ride, and I was discovering the heated seats for the first time. Oh, Oh. oh yeah you, you I, think you you think you don't need it but oh, no but no no <laughs> i had them i had a triumph explorer before the gs and it had heated seats and they were amazing ah, absolutely right. amazing stunning yes. yeah because yeah, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't just heat your bum does it bruce no it's great it's, it, it's brilliant <laughs> I, I i totally i get that i do get that i'm not going to spend four or five hundred quid to get a blooming heated seat on my tractor <laughs> but I was well impressed. I, I was really, really impressed because it because it's not just your bum. It's, it's it, it gets the whole thing. It gets the whole package, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. The trouble is though, is that once once those parts are warm, you start feeling cold everywhere else. That's what I've found. Yeah, but it helps. It helps, and you, and you got yeah. your hands, and you and you get your five levels on the new bikes. You get your five levels of heating, and level five is just too much. Have they five levels? Yeah. 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 God, what on the GS? Oh, could mine. Yeah. Mine's so, just... so the only thing is, as soon as you press that button, it goes max. Hands on now. as soon as you press that button, and, and when it's dark, you can't see which button it is either. You know, someone needs to come up with some backlighting, don't they? But as soon as you press that it. button, <laughs> as soon as you press that button, it then the, the, the TFT comes up with the option of um, whether you want to control seat heating, dry rider seat heating, or. Um, or the hand grips. So mm. you, you toggle between the two and then and then you adjust it on the wheel. And then right. the rear seat, there's only two I think there's only two levels of heating. I haven't tested that. I haven't had a pillion yet. Ah, so, right. So what the, the, the seat has five levels, not the grips, or do the grips have that as well? Yeah, they're both do. Grip oh, grips right. and seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, so as soon as you press the button for the with the button you've currently got on your bike, it's mm-hmm. the same button. But as soon as you do that, it activates a toggle feature on the TFT. On the, on the thingy, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. Toggle, yeah. Just like you toggle between nav and TFT, you toggle yeah. between seat and grips. Yeah, oh, and right, you I got five. I got my GS June last year, and and it's it's still only got three levels in the grips, but um. Oh well, must have come out just after I got mine then. Hang mind. on, you got three levels. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, two, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Two and off, three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Um, 
for me, all, all I want on... Well, there's two things I, I still want to put on my tractor. One is the engine guards. I just, you know, the engine bars. I just want to put engine bars on it just for that peace of mind. And you know, I got, you know, I deal with SW Motec now, don't you? Do you? Well, yeah. yeah. Um, Cost price to you, Bruce. Well, see, uh, this sounds really pretentious and I, 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 I don't want it, but it, it plainly is. I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to buy them. I'm, I'm just going to see if I can, you know, the trouble is I don't I don't go out with the begging bowl, so I just think well some somebody might get in touch with me and go, would you want to try these? You know what I mean? And ninety nine oh, times okay. so, so, it never happens. So. <laughs> but all right, so, so so if I give you if I if I give you a set of SW Motec lower crash bars, yeah, mm, mm. yeah, I've had enough I'll beers. Be a, okay, I'll do that. I'll, I'll be your best. All right, that's a that's a deal. Thank you very much, just Steve. That's a deal. Gun in, in black or silver? <laughs> oh. Mm. You want to really <laughs> no, oh God, no. Black, I think. Uh, black. What do you think? Only Van der Lich, doom and blue. So it's, it's matte black or, or silver. What do you think fits best on the rally then? The HP. I think black. Yeah, so have you seen that video I did of... Um, oh, I nearly said his name though. So this drink is not, it's not good for me. Because right? um, here, watch this. Uh, there's a video I, I, I've done... And the guy's got the full HP billet pack mm. uh, on a on a twelve fifty. Is it a, is it a rally? I'm sure it's a rally. It's the same bike as yours, yeah. Mm-hmm. The same HP bike, but, but he's got that billet pack as well, the HP billet Ooh. pack. Yeah. And then he's got the black. Uh, I took some really good photographs of it. It's um, there's a definitely a video on my channel of it. Um, it's about it it's a short, quite a short video because I just I just highlight highlight all the parts on his bike. Yeah, the SW Motec bars look really good on his bike. Yeah, they do. Anyway, low, he didn't go up there. I I had SW Motec actually contact me about about supplying all basically everything they do for the bike. But really, uh, yeah, yeah. But they they okay. the condition of that was that I was not allowed to have anything else on my bike, and I was wow. just well, that's that's not how this you know they wanted a proper exclusivity type of contract and I was like yeah. oh, that's, that's not how I work so I knocked it back but you know I was thinking bugger because I, I loved a lot of their you know I've always bought SW Motec kit for the bike but um, yeah. I was like nah I don't I don't want to be tied in like that you kind of you've got your integrity at the end of the day don't you and if something's yeah, shit I'm going to yeah. say it's shit I don't want to be tied in to say oh this is great when it's when I don't think it's great but yeah, the, the other thing is I really miss, I've always had a full Akropovich system on my last two GSs, and this one is bog standard, and my God, I miss that. I really miss that beautiful engine. Just the full, the full system. Oh, it's gorgeous. The sound is amazing. I miss that. It's funny, actually, because a bike, a bike I had in last week with, with um, Clearwater Dixies on it, mm-hmm. the guy, um, he asked me to take off his Akropovich, and put on his um, OEM. Did he? Why is that? So I can probably. Too loud. Yeah, it's, uh, he's. I must admit, he's probably the the hard the, the hardest rider. I say hardest. What's what, what's what I'm looking for? Not not badass. He's um hardcore. That's the word. Hard, mm. Most hardcore rider I know. So uh, he's got um, a GS Adventure HP, and he only rides it really in America. So he oh. ships it. He has obviously didn't do anything for the last year, but he dropped his bike off and asked me to do work work on his sit fits from T3s and work on his um Dixies, Clearwater Dixies. But uh they do nineteen hours a day. Nine nineteen hours of riding a day. Yeah, yeah. Um what, what do they call it? Iron butt. Uh, these these, yeah, these yeah. Uh, the, the iron butt challenge in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get yeah, nineteen yeah. hours. Is that, is that safe? You know. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be right. Um, and so the noise of the Akrapovich, he says it's, it's oh, too much. To and his wife's on the back as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I used to love it, I, but I do remember I was doing a track day at um, Bedford Autodrome. I was doing the California Superbike School Day at the Bedford Autodrome. And even with the baffle in, but I think it's probably because it was the full system, I had the baffle in on the, the Akrapovich system. It passed the noise, the static noise test, but I kept triggering one of the trackside noise meters mm. and I was like, oh right oh, okay but I, I quite like that I, do, I, I am a firm believer that 
loud can save save lives. I do think I yeah. notice. Oh, maybe maybe it's just because I've not got the spotlights. I don't know, but I do feel much more on offer now with a standard can, no spotlights, than I did before. But then some people will say, "Well, you got knocked off loads before." I, I did, but that was, you know, that's. I mean, commuting commuting in South London is a total different kettle of fish. It <laughs> so it's just it's just a different yeah. world. You're, you're you're literally spinning the roulette wheel there. But um, yeah, for me it would be the exhaust and um, the engine bars. That's what that's what I miss on my bike. Mm-hmm. Next one, Salmon and Sons. My OCD means that the D4s I've mounted on the OEM engine bars cause me mental anguish as they aren't sitting equally apart or in the same place as the bars are different sizes. Just thought you should know. <laughs> You've got an OCD problem. <laughs> yeah, you can see him cringing. <laughs> Um, nice. Next one. Uh, where are we? Robert Newman, twenty-seven. Hello, gentlemen. A question for both. When making a cuppa, milk first or last? I'm a milk first man. Last. I get told. Nah, I get told there is a place reserved in hell for me for it. Yet they love the tea I make. You're saying milk last? Yeah. Nah. You're wrong. You're wrong. I respect I respect your viewpoint, but you're wrong. We get the colour just right then, don't you? you? See have you have you tried milk first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the key with milk first is hardly any milk. If you like a strong cuppa, it's just it's literally a couple of drips of milk. You don't need much at all. So my my grandmother, bless her soul, you know, she'd been gone many, many years, but that you know that that was probably the best cup of tea ever. So I suppose yeah, I can't disagree with you because her tea was the best because it was always made in a teapot. I was going to say yeah, yeah, teapot with a, coat with a cozy, you know. And she, and she she's for she's a northern lass from Liverpool, so originally from Liverpool. Right. Um, so um, yeah, so it, milk in the bottom of the cup and pour it in. But for me, That's it's right. like you're playing a game of like chance. It's like pot luck, whereas. <laughs> I've, I've I haven't made uh, a cup of tea in a kettle for years, so 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 for, for me it's a case of throwing a tea bag in a cup, take it to the hot tap. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and and, yeah, and then you put the milk in to get the colour right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get you. But do you not sque- do you not squeeze the tea bag? Like I I'll yeah. leave the tea bag. I leave the tea. My I don't drink tea. Even though I'm called Teapot One, I very rarely have any tea. I'm I'm a coffee man, and my wife is a total tea addict. She's a northerner, so she's a proper tea addict. Has about thirty thousand yeah. cups a day. But when wow. I make her a brew, <clears throat> I I probably leave, I probably leave the tea bag in there for a good, I'd say three to five minutes at least. Wow! And then and then you must strangle. get like scales on the top. Oh yeah 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 yeah. But she she likes a proper strong cup of tea. Like proper builders Build, tea. Builders tea. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know when you go into those calves for your morning brekkie and they have the vat, the hot, the hot urn vat at the back that's had tea yeah. bags in it like all week. She loves that sort of tea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's into that. There was a, there was actually a thing. Somebody tagged me in it. There was a sci, believe it or not, there was a scientific research um, study done that the results of it were that in hard water areas, milk first actually produces the better tea because the, the tea can infuse with the better. milk and the water better, but it's only in hard water areas, apparently. Yeah, I only drink tea um, past midday. I'm coffee yeah. in the morning. Yeah. yeah, and tea like past three o'clock. Uh, I've, I've tried to limit my coffees to one, one a day, but sometimes to get squeezed in because I, I really am a big coffee man. Yeah, so same. like itself, I've got, I've got a really nice machine, a nice sa- sage Oracle machine, Ooh. Um, which I bought. Oh, you familiar with the, with the, with the machine? Hi bro. Hi bro. This man. Hi bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's good. So, it's good. Yeah. So I, I, I remember I was in John Lewis um, a couple of few years ago and I was like, there's no way we're going to spend that kind of money on a frigging coffee machine. <laughs> but then we tasted one from it because the yeah, you know, you the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Look at the crema. The crema. I was like, that's, that's amazing. Oh, latte art as well. I love this. Yeah. 
So I, I literally walked around the corner and, and my wife was saying, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? He goes, I'm, I'm working out how we can afford this. Because, because we, we, we buy a lot of coffee, from Costa mm. Coffee and Starbucks. So I said, if we, if we buy this today, we have to make a vow that we will not buy Starbucks and Costa for the next two years. So for we, the next so I, 95 I years. <laughs> no, 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 it, it wasn't. I, I actually did the maths and it was 14 months. So, but based on how much we drink normally in Starbucks, we buy. Yeah, yeah, if we don't yeah. buy a, a Starbucks or Costa for 14 months, you know, w- within reason, it could have you're on holiday or you're away or something, um, and you need a coffee. So I even got takeaway cups, everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can you take your coffee with you. Obviously, you, you just buy the, the appropriate mug. But um, we did. We, we bought we bought the machine, and, and we didn't we didn't buy Starbucks and Costa. So we did save money. It's um, <laughs> it makes great coffee. But you then, don't need to justify it to me, Steve. No, I'm justifying it to myself because I couldn't justify it. I, can't I know, remember, man. I, know. No, I can't remember how much it was, but I know it was. I know it's a either two or three grand or something. This machine, but yeah. it's um one of the best purchases purchases I've ever made. I. I was, you know, these little pod machines that you get. I, I was yeah. a bit of a snob. I'd never tasted them, but I used to look at them and think, oh, no, you know, because I, I was the cafetier man. You squeeze it, and there's the whole ritual that yeah. goes around behind preparing your coffee. Exactly the same as you. For our wedding, we ha- we got a load of um, John Lewis vouchers. So yeah. Once we were in the house and we'd had the kitchen all redone and stuff, we did the old supermarket sweep, turn up at John Lewis, right, we're going to have this, 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 this. And my wife was like, why don't you get a coffee machine? And I was just thinking in my head, don't be ridiculous, it's going to cost a fortune. Exactly as you said, the lady was there selling one of those little Lavazza pod machines. Well, that good. And I, yeah. yeah, and I thought, no, that's great. Want- yeah, I thought I don't, I don't want, I don't want a pod machine. And she said, "How do you like your coffee?" So I told her, and she said, "Try that." And she gave me one. And I was just like, "Oh my god, that's amazing!" So obviously, we walked out with a little Lavazza. I think they're called Mia Modi or something. The little pod machines, brilliant. But I was having, I was having about six to eight a day, and it was just, you know, I'm, I'm just not sleeping. You know, I would stop drinking by about five o'clock in the evening, and I would not be in. You're talking three or four in the morning before I'm going to bed so now i limit myself to <laughs> one or two a day really now but, ah yeah i love them i'm a, definitely a coffee man right we are on to the second last question are you okay for time yeah i, I could carry on talking about coffee right now but I won't <laughs> <just go carry. laughs> right next one uh audas audas rider a-u-d-a-c-e audace audace rider and my question is, why do most GS owners still ride with all the extreme survival boxes on their bikes, even though they're all empty or all their stuff would fit in the top box? Excuse me. Because making one's bike two metres wide not only stops them from filtering, <laughs> yeah, but all of the other bikers behind uh, the cause. Oh, also, but also, God, see when you try and read some people's... Please, people, use punctuation. Please use punctuation. Because making one's bike two metre wide not only stops them from filtering, but all of the other bikers behind them because they never move oh. to allow other people pass. Okay, so slight, first of all... Slight generalisation. First of all, pu- punctuation requires intelligence and education, and obviously educated <laughs> riders. Right, beamers... So <laughs> that's that's all yours. Steve Abel, a bike thing. All his. <laughs> you hey, can deal with that. that. This is very off record. I know I know it's you know, everyone's watching this, but it's off record. And you know, I'm not wearing my bike thing hat. I know I'm representing a bike thing, but I've been drinking, so you know It's uh, only about a hundred thousand downloads. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I am jesting. <laughs> but um well, as you know, um, or a lot of my subscribers know, I don't even have um, panniers. I just, I just got rid of them. I just, and, and this sounds really big-headed, it's a, and a, but it's the, it's the honest truth that on my was it my first GS, yeah, my first GS, I had the silver boxes. I hated yeah, yeah. them right from day one, but I thought well, this, this is, this is it. I wasn't looking around at all the uh, different options with um, soft bags. I, I wasn't aware of Moscow Motor and Lone Rider and stuff like that. I just, that's what I, I just went out and bought it, didn't look around mm-hmm. at all. Um, and then where, what, what pass was it on? I was, 
I can't remember which pass it was on, but I got so low on a corner, I scraped my pannier. Awesome. And I thought, awesome. You know, well, maybe it's mounted wrong, I don't know, but the sli- but the, they have got sliders on them, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Yeah, yeah, but the actual panniers, so the pod boxes, they've got like plastic um, edges. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether that's just cosmetic or whether it's for sliding, or not, I, 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 I don't, don't know. I don't, th- I don't think they're sliders. I think they're, they're no, there for reinforcement not. and protection, but they look yeah. awesome when they start scraping. <laughs> Yeah, so I was very proud of those scrapes. On, on, I, I got them both sides as well. I was very, happy very happy. Days. I actually lean better to the left than I do to the right, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I love left bends more than right bends. That would yeah, be a good yeah, question, yeah. by the way. Has anyone asked that? I've, I've had it before. Yeah, yeah, I've, had it. yeah I've, I've had it before. Long, yeah, left. I like going left. Um, but um, I prefer right. Uh, yeah, it's weird, that. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. See, I'm left-handed. I wonder if that's got something to do with it. It says that when I go around a left bend and I'm on it, you know, you know what I mean when I say I'm on it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like, it, it just feels like you're correcting everything. It's like you, you're balancing everything out. I've been going right, right, roundabouts all this time. And then you go left, it feels new, <laughs> it feels lovely. I don't, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I tell weird. you I feel, what, I, feel... I, I, I actually prefer riding and driving on the right hand side of the road so do i it just i just yeah. feel i hate to i'm sorry people i really am yeah. sorry because i'm british you know and all that but yeah. i i genuinely do think i prefer being on the right hand side of the road yeah anyway so anyway. okay here's a question for you then here's a Go question on. for you then bruce so because i i've never had a problem when riding in europe where I've accidentally gone out on the left. But I have had the problem coming back home where I'm riding on the right. Have you? <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. And, and sometimes it takes me weeks because I'll be working from home, working on my desk, working in the workshop, and they just jump out in the car and you, you hit a country lane. And, and because there's no other cars on the road, you've got nothing to tell you, oh, shit, what side am I supposed to be on? I'm in a car, yeah. not a bike. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, oh, damn, crap, crap. I must have that, that side of that side. <laughs> I, have, I have found myself doing that a few times. Like, oh, right, yeah. which side of the road do we, you know, as, as you as you jump on the bike and head off, I'm like, right, what, what side of the road do we ride on again? I have had that before. And I did I it even... once in Germany, yeah. going up a street, empty, like you just said, empty street in a town. And I was yeah. on the wrong side of the road <laughs> yeah, <laughs> until yeah. the car comes the other way. You're like, oh, so I've done that once, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got it on camera actually with a mate who did that as well. And he, he's like, he's, he's looking, he's, he's all confused. He's talking to me on the intercoms and he's saying, well, well, why is everyone looking at me funny? He says, you've just gone the wrong way around the roundabout. You've actually entered it <laughs> oh, no. on the right-hand side. And it, it's like the, the roundabout shaped in a way for you to go round the yeah, roundabout yeah, yeah. anti-clockwise. But he, somehow he managed to go clockwise. Oh my God. <laughs> and he had cars everywhere. It's like, what's going on? I guess you took the wrong way around. Wow, that a- God, that, that could have ended differently. Couldn't I'm it? Jesus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, now, with this question, I, I again, I never used to have the old panniers, but I, I got given a set of the Lone Rider bags, those moto bags, and I like them. I, and I, I, liked, I liked the look, but I didn't like the fact that with them, once they were on, they were on. You know, they weren't, there was no quick release. There's just there a, is now. Could, yeah, there is now. You can flatten them, but yeah. once they were on, it's like, well, that's them on now. Yeah, now now they're they're just launching. I've I've got some coming. I think they've just launching the new. Uh, it's like an, an adapter kit to turn yeah. those bags into quick yeah. release. So I'm looking forward to trying them, and I think I'm, I've got a big Scandinavia trip coming up in September. So I I think I probably will. Put, well, I will put them on for that, definitely. But I, I have a top box. I've just got the normal um, Vario top box on the back of my bike. I just yeah. find it handy. You know, it's it's like a boot on your bike, isn't it? You can just you can yeah. ch- chuck stuff in there. So for me, yeah, but I don't... I'm not one of those people that rides with panniers all the time. And I get what you're saying, or that's about, you know, blocking and holding people up when you're filtering. It is a bit of a nightmare, isn't it, when you get stuck behind them? Yeah, but if, if I'm dashing out quickly on the bike to do something, I'll put a rucksack on. Rucksack on. Yeah. I've got, uh, let's say, a bag on, on my handlebar as well. Or if I'm on a road trip, 
because I've done so many, I've just managed to find a way of packing two weeks worth of clothing into one bag, which sits on my back seat and, and, and it fits lengthways. Uh, and that's the lone rider. I know I'm plugging it here a little bit and they don't sponsor me, um, but uh, they sponsor you, lone rider. No, 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 they don't. Right, just supplied okay. some kit. All right, okay. So, 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 um, I don't get free stuff. I still, I still buy it. I think it's a bit, bit discounted. But if people click through and um, decide to buy something, uh, something from Lone Rider, but they click through my website, then I get a little kickback. They used gotcha. to do discounts, but they don't do that anymore. But um, what, what, what's the what's the bag called? The Overlander bag. There's two different sizes. Oh yeah, so yeah, I've got, yeah. Uh -huh. I've got a larger Overlander bag. It's really good. I love it because it, it's four four clicks. It's just click, 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 click. Straight on the back, you're in. You're Job into done. your your B and B. <laughs> nice, yeah, yeah nice. Um, my back teeth are floating again. Can we pop for a quick pee? We've only got one more question to go, but um, yeah, mine as well. Actually, again. right. We'll have a quick natural break. Stand by, folks. So you're quicker than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're back in the room, folks. I, I lied. There's two more questions here. Uh, right, Dale well, I'm Winton. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Dale Winton. Well, then. Dale, Dale, Dale Winton. Dale Winton. Is he still alive? No. Is he not? Has he well, passed on? Oh. Pretty sure he did. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Here's to Dale Winton. God, I'm dropping stuff now. Um, right, next question. Dale Wintle, 0022. Hi, I love people's usernames. They're great. Hi to you both. Hope you're well. All good. Thank you, Dale. Hope you're well too. Great podcast, by the way, Bruce. Not missed one yet. Thank you very much. Question. When someone asks you why you do ride motorcycles, they're dangerous. What is your answer? Ah... Uh, well, well, for me, yes, they are. You know, yeah, they, 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 they are dangerous. It depend, but it depends how you ride them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, accidents happen. But the enjoyment I get from bikes far outweighs anything else for me personally. Hmm. Is that a wet enough answer? Yeah, you choose your demons. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so I say I don't drink. Well, here I am with a drink, but, um, <laughs> but I don't drink. I'm a very, very occasional observer. I hardly drop it. I, I do enjoy drinking, but I'm like, I can go a month without a beer. Yeah, um, yeah same. Mm. You know, don't take drugs or anything like that. Don't smoke. And uh, and the answer to that is I can't afford it. And people think, of course you can afford to smoke. Because no, no, I really can't. And, and if I could, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd really feel it. You know, the, it's a big financial loss. It's so expensive. But, but when it comes to bikes, when I discovered when I discovered bikes, <laughs> yeah, I um, I I was doing quite well in my business, and uh, I just bought. I'm not, I sound like I'm bragging, but I'm just being honest. I'm just being me. No, no, I just no, no. Bought, yeah, yeah. I, just, I just rewarded myself. Uh, and bought myself a brand new Aston Martin. Now, it's not the one that people can sometimes see on um, my, my videos. That's my wife, my wife's car. She's actually success, very successful herself. She, she's the breadwinner, if I'm completely honest. <laughs> but so, so she, 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 she is, no, seriously, she, is, she, 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 she works for a FTSE 100 company at uh, director level. So she, 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 she's very successful. But, wow. um, uh, but I, bought, I bought that car. And I'm thinking, oh, this is great, it's fantastic. You know, people thinking I'm some sort of footballer or something because I was, a, I was in my early 30s. Um, but then a mate of mine had an FZ1. Uh, sorry, FZ6. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, do you want to come on the back of it? And I was like, yeah, he had a helmet for me. And I went on the back of it, I was hooked. Yeah. It's hooked. And um, that was it. The Aston just started gathering dust in the, in the garage. Uh, I was just, uh, I, I had to learn to ride. I remember I, I went away and, so I might divert him from the question. Sorry. No, 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 crack on, crack on. <laughs> but I, I had, I, I was, I literally booked to go because I was, I was divorced then as well. I hadn't met my wife who I'm with now. And I was booked to go on an 18 to 30s um, holiday. I, I was actually 32, but I was booked to go on an 18 to 30s uh, holiday just to, just to go and have a good, good time. Yeah, yeah. And I cancelled it to go and learn to ride a bike. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can't. So I was about to go to Mexico, literally just going so many oats, basically. Mm -hmm. 
and um, uh, yeah, but I, I just commi commi committed uh, to, to find someone to teach me to ride a bike, and uh, in that, that that week, and uh, so I had to quickly do my theory, pass my theory without even revising for it, and he put me through this intense course. He had to counsel someone as well. Uh, he says I can't fit you over three months. He goes, don't worry, I'll find someone else. No, 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 I counsel someone. There. I don't care where it is in the country. I'm going to learn to ride a bike next week. I'm going to pass next week. Um, I don't care where it is. I'm going to do it. But anyway, this guy who was local to me, he said, don't worry, I'll cancel someone. We can do it. And uh, he got me through and uh, I passed. And um, the first bike was an Aprilia Trono, 1000cc. First and I nearly bike. took my life, actually, in my first bike. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. I know. I know. And I remember being very careful. And I, I remember feeling that power, thinking, oh, my God. Why have I? Why did I just spend over a hundred grand on Aston Martin when I've got, I've got this for like I don't know was it seven grand? I was like, this yeah, is yeah. amazing. I, like, <laughs> I kind of like went off card, and um, so and I, I went to the Isle of Man with some friends who had the XZ6, and uh, they kept telling me about the the course because they'd been there before. They had a friend who lived in Ramsey at the time, mm -hmm. um, who's unfortunately passed away. Not a bike accident, but. Um, but yeah, so we um, uh, went over there and they're telling me about the, um, have you done Isle of Man, Bruce? Yeah, yeah. Have you been? Yeah. 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 So you've got the mountain road and, the, and at the end you come down Greg and the bar and they're telling mm -hmm. me about all the twists and turns because they've done it before, I've never done it. And you come down the end and you've got Greg and the bar and you just open mm -hmm. up. And I sound like I'm bragging here, but I remember holding back because they had the years of experience of riding their FZ6s. Which I look back, I'm not really, you know, I'm not an FZ6 or FZ1 fan at all. But, um, and I was, I, and I was behind them and I just felt like they're holding me back. But I was also telling myself, you know, this you is feel invincible, don't you? Faster, you know, because I'd never really experienced the power of this bike kit either. I'd never like mm -hmm. gone over 5,000 revs. You know, I, was, I was riding it very conservatively. And I came around the top of Mountain Road. You do that left turn and you go and you've got Greg in the bar and you've got the pub at the end, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And that then reminded me of the conversations we had on the ferry. Ah, oh, this is the bit. And they weren't really accelerating out of that bend. And I opened her up. Third gear, I opened her up. Now on Greg in the bar, you've got a dip, haven't you? As you're coming mm -hmm. down, you've got a little dip. And on that dip, the front wheel just went straight oh. up like that. My God. I thought, I thought that was it. I thought that was it. All I saw was sky and clouds. Sky yeah. and clouds. And I grabbed the clutch. All I did was, thank God I didn't grab the brake. I grabbed the clutch. The front nose did come down. I don't know how. It came down and I sat on the tank. I remember <laughs> sitting up on the fuel cap. <laughs> Pushing myself back with this, this t not proper tank slapper, but the front wheel's doing this. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I got pulled over in the car park put the kickstand down, stalled it, and just jumped off and just lay down in the car park. Thinking, <laughs> oh my God. I just couldn't believe that power. Couldn't believe yeah. the power. But I overtook them at the same time. So, so, so as I opened it up, I took them, front wheel goes up, and I can't bring it back down again. They, they thought, they thought, that looks so good. How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're having a 5p, 50p moment, yeah. <laughs> Hence why, people, you do not get a Tuono as your first bike. <laughs> mm. My mate, the guy I was telling you about that, that went over the roundabout, Amish, that was on his first... He'd, he'd only just passed. He That was his first bike, and it was a Triumph um, Thruxton. Thruxton R was his first yeah. ever bike. Oh my God, he he had that year. He crashed twice, but but was miraculously hardly damaged the bike at all. Then he he went away the following year and did loads of work by himself, trying to improve his riding skills. Came away with us, and to be honest, he shouldn't be here. You know, he should be dead because he had a huge smash in Portugal. I've I've still not edited that series of vids because I can't. I don't really know how to handle that whole situation because he, he yeah. should be dead. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I've got it all on film. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't, yeah. I don't want his family to see it. I don't, I don't really want him to see it again. And it just doesn't feel right, you know, to, because it would be clickbait gold, you know, it, people would love to see it, but 
I'm like, no, I can't. I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I just don't want to be part of that. It's a shame because yeah. we had such a giggle on the rest of the trip, but just that one. Anyway, so yeah, poor old Amish, bless him, doesn't ride anymore at the moment. <laughs> he's, uh, he's still he's still not fully recovered yet. His shoulders still a bit knackered. Um, but anyway, yeah, Dale went. Dale, your answer, the answer to your question: uh, What do we say to people that say motorcycles are dangerous? Did we answer that? Yes, they are dangerous, um, but you know, they are, and you have to respect you, you have to respect it. And I, mm. I learned that um, the kind of the hard way. And I've, mm. I've had a few offs. I've been I've been knocked off by a car in Hungary. Um, I've been knocked off due to me not paying attention at slower yeah. speeds. It's almost like. When someone said to me, "How could you have, you know, when you, you've had, you've you've been knocked off before, haven't you?" <laughs> Quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, and you, and you you constantly go over it in your head over and over again. What could you have done to resolve that? Mm. And, when, and when I came off in the Pecos, I went I went down a snow drain, and the only thing, and my answer was, if I was going twenty mile an hour faster, if I was doing eighty instead of sixty, I would I, I would have got around that corner. Because I'd have been on it, I'd have been refocused and paying attention. Yeah. But yeah. we just said to ourselves in our intercoms, let's slow down because we keep getting rear end slides, both of us. Because you get in Picos, you, you get a bit of shingle on the corners sometimes, don't mm -hmm. you? Sometimes, so, you yeah, know, yeah. It's a bit scratching around. You find yourself going, whoa, you're laughing and think, whoa, that's a close one. <laughs> but um, we, we decided to slow down. We're, one, we're a couple of days away uh, from getting the ferry and. Um, Slow down. Let's take in this view. Let's take in this view. And uh, I was just looking at the view. And before I knew it, I'm going down a snow drain. Oh. So should have been going faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, I I, mm. I used to ride so much quicker than I do now. Looking back, ri ridiculous speeds. But I always felt totally in control. I always felt... And if, whenever anything happened, bar one time when I nearly killed myself in Germany. But apart from that, whenever anything happened, I was always able to react. And, yeah. well, looking back, I got away with it. That literally all was, all it was. I got away with it. But in my head, I was like, oh, I can I can deal with this. I, you know, I've, I've got the skill level to cope with this. And then yeah. just I went through this period of about two years, a few years ago, just commuting in and out of London, which I did seven days a week, 52 weeks a year in all, you know, all weathers, yeah. I was doing that and never had an issue. And then about, about four years ago, I had my first one, which is just some, you know, innocuous rear end shunt. Like I, I was, I looked over my left shoulder to check the bus lane before I moved into the bus lane. And as I've done that and turned around, the guy in front slammed his brakes on. So I, I literally just clipped the back light of his of his car oh you read him That's yeah yeah bad. so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's london <laughs> after all and yeah. it, you know it literally it cracked his rear light cluster but on my triumph explorer it literally exploded the front all the plastics fell off the front of my bike so um and then from that i ended up having again coming home from work i had a guy do a u-turn i i was filtering by a bus that had pulled in and the guy in front of the bus, a young lad, just did a U-turn without looking and clipped the front of my, my bike. <clears throat> then I had a nurse pull out in front of me. And then uh, what else did I have after that? I had the, the pheasant incident up in the Lake District. So it was like one thing after the other over a period of about four years. And it it literally put the brakes on me to the extent now where, you know, I, I, I very rarely... Okay, I might do 70, 75 in a 60. I might do 80, 85 in a 70. But I just don't do the, you know, days of old, you'd be maxing out the jigsaw flat out. But I, I just won't do that yeah. anymore. You know, it's, I, I just slowed right down. And What's the fastest you've ever gone in a straight line? Just the, the jigsaw 186 flat out. Just, just pinned. Yeah. Well, you could do that. You do, they do that in France all day long, really. <laughs> you know, some of the beautiful big D roads they have there. Fast as I've done, I'm assuming we're not incriminating ourselves by saying this. Actually, it was the autobahn. It was the autobahn in Germany. I, I, I won't say where. I won't say where. But I, the fastest I've done is 176 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And it, the bike was still going. I was on an HP4 carbon. Oh. And the bike was still going. Wow. And I remember having this feeling of feeling safe. I remember having this feeling of I'm in this bubble. Yeah. Nothing can hurt me. 
And I also remember when I slowed down, I got down to about 110. I thought I, thought I could get off and push it. That's know? crazy, isn't it? Absolutely insane, crazy. isn't it? Yeah. And the reason I stopped at 170 odd is because things that I was seeing in the distance were then, were then next to me and I, mm-hmm. my brain wasn't working fast enough. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah. realised then that, that, that no, you need to come off the gas. You, know, you just, just can't do that on the roads. It's just it's suicide. And it's not. And it's, not as fa- it's not. As, it, it's actually not. I didn't find it fun. I remember my adrenaline going uh, right and knots, which is a, a mm. sign that it's not safe. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I, I prefer twisty roads. Yeah. Uh, get riding between forty up to eighty. You know. Mm. Yeah. Which is uh, why, I, like, I, I, yeah. So go on. Sorry. I was going to say, I, you, I, I, I've just started getting the feeling of um, backing the GS on corners using the back brake before the bends. I just oh, started yeah, doing that it. on my last road trip. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it. It doesn't feel like much, but when your mate's behind you and he can see the black line you're making, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, they're really long black lines. But you, 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 all you're doing is dabbing it and you're just backing the wheel out a little bit. Um, I, I've, oh, I, I, it's such a thrill. That, that I not- really, really enjoy doing. I'm not going to try that because because I'll I'll throw myself over the bit. I'll high side it. I know I will. But um, the thing is, I I, yeah. I used to love I used to love that speed. I gen I used to love it, and I and I felt in control. But like now now I'm the polar opposite. I, I think I'm overly I'm probably overly cautious. I would say now, or, or is that is there such a thing as being overly cautious on a bike? Who knows? Who knows? I'm I'm alive, so who knows. Well, the thing is, and the more you do to your bike as well, because I just spent a fortune on this, and yeah. I'm, I was out filming with Denali yesterday, and I did a lot of my 2018 GSA in the woods, and then we pulled this out to do the road footage. But then, um, and and then Tom was like saying, "God, this bike looks like something out of a movie, Hollywood movie. It's fantastic." And I said, "Well, there's a there's a dirt track, like an uh, like a gravel drive, which is kicking up loads of dust, and everything." So I, he asked me to go down there on that, and I was like, um, took the traction off, mm-hmm. and I was spinning the back wheel up, just going down this gravel drive, keeping the front brake on just a little bit, so I wasn't getting too fast. Mm-hmm. But you think to yourself, oh my god, if I drop this bike, no, I no, no. So, so you me, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be gutted if I drop that now. Gutted. <laughs> it's in my head now because the past two GSs I've had, once I've gotten to the stage where I'm like, oh. I've got everything, you know. I've got the engine bars. I've got, I've got the full exhaust system on them. You know, you, you've done all the little trick bits that you want to do to it. Nine times out of ten, that's when I've had the accident, and then the bike's gone. So I'm almost like that with this one now. I'm thinking, oh, I don't, I don't want to trick it up because I can't afford to have another crash. <laughs> I mean, I mean, right, yeah. Last, oh, blimey, what's that? Oh, bloody hell. The SD card, I've never had this happen before. The SD card on my GoPro is now full. <laughs> we really? filled it up. So I'll be relying on this camera now on the, the computer. So hello from this camera. Um, we are at the last question. Yeah. Last one. Nick, uh, Nick in Nutsford, what sort of screwdriver do you use? Question for both of you. <laughs> first of all, Nick, first of all, I've stayed at the Mere in Nutsford many, many occasions. What a fantastic hotel. If you haven't stayed there, the Mere in Nutsford is really good. Right. <laughs> Screwdriver, I've got a Milwaukee. Mm. I've got a... Uh, the question was the, the Milwaukee, uh, the, the screwdriver, what screwdriver mm-hmm. do we use? Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. use um, a, a Milwaukee... I don't know what the model number is. It's, it's, about, it's about 10 digits long, but a, a Milwaukee 12 volt. Um, screwdriver. I I I just I just have like screwdrivers and I just pick them up and use them. I think they're Halford's own manual ones. That's what okay. I use. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Am I, have I got? Am I very red? I look very red, don't I? You are quite red, yeah. But you said it is very <laughs> warm in your, in your pool house. It is, and all this beer as well. I tell you, it's bloody boiling in my my little office. I've got. I've got all these different lights everywhere bouncing off the walls, and uh, it's like a sauna in here. Yeah, but Bruce, you're gonna have to come down here. We're gonna have to do um, some sort of live um, thing from here. You, you, you'll love it in here. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, like, the whole point of these pop one. What's that? Yeah. yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Let's see it. Let's see it. Hang on. Hang on. 
something like that. Oh my God, there is a pool. I thought you were taking oh, yeah. a piss. <laughs> you thought I was taking the piss? Yeah, look, look, oh my look. God. Me, me and you in that hot tub, mate. <laughs> That's a big guy, I know, but you know, why not, mate? <laughs> oh my good God. I yeah. genuinely thought you were taking a piss. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, wow. not at all. Not at all. Fair right. play. Mate, the, uh, the whole, the whole. Well, it's not the point of the podcast. The point of the co- podcast is just the, the opportunity to chat to people like you, people that have got a story to tell. I just, I enjoy long form conversation. But I want to. In my head, it was always done in person. So you know, it would be like for you, it would be like I would ride to you. We'd do a feature on a bike thing and what you've got going on there, and then we'd yeah. do the podcast. You know, we just so I'd get video content, and then also we'd do a podcast around it. Obviously, COVID arrived and had other ideas about it. But once we move on and we have freedom back, that's exactly what I want to be able to do. So yeah, I'd love, cool. we should do this in person one day as well, for sure, definitely. No, definitely. Well, there's, there's, there's always a damn good coffee here when you're up this way. So Right, you're, you are on. I'm up for it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, because one of the other things that we're offering here is um, the Airbnb side of things. So we've got, we've got two rooms, two double rooms with en suite and a lounge uh, at one part of the one part of the farmhouse, which okay. I'm making available to certain customers where they're bringing their bikes in for work to be done, uh, mm-hmm. where I need it overnight kind of thing, and they can stay here, use the facility that's here, use the pool, use, use you know, we've got a sauna here as well. Um, Blame we, we want people to use it. It's, it's quite gutting because we've been here since Christmas. I spent quite a bit of money getting the pool you know, filled. Uh, it, it works off a computerized system where it measures all the chlorine and the all the ph balance so it's perfect it's, the, the water is perfect i haven't even um, got a bath oh, <laughs> shut up this you have right we've got a shower <laughs> <laughs> but um but it's, it's a shame because we because of lockdown our, our family you know we, we've got we've got nephews and nieces and stuff who are kids we've got a beautiful slide on the side of the pool you know and they can't even come and use they can't it use so. it yeah well, so we're, we're nearly really out of it use it we're nearly, Sorry? we're nearly, we're nearly free. Yeah. It's nearly there, nearly there. Yeah. Um, what's what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Should they want? Yeah. Okay. So I prefer people emailing me, Steve at abikething dot com. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not so quick with the social media. I will reply to people eventually, but sometimes it can be three days because I. I actually turn my notifications off on all social media because it's too much of a distraction. That's a game um, changer, isn't it? it? It it is, and really I should be embracing it. And I've been speaking to Tom Boombox um because that's his thing, isn't it? The whole social media. And uh yeah. I really gel I really gelled with Tom as well. I, re- I really like nice him as a, as a on a personal level and also his, his his whole approach to you know his mindset and his work and everything. So I'm hoping we might be the best to do some work together in the future as well. Yeah, but, he's um, good lad. But I need to embrace the social media. But I just don't. It's it's almost impossible to run a business, run your emails, and do all the all your social media messages. People just decide, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna message him on Facebook. I'll message him on Instagram. Yeah. And you've got to keep on top of all of that. It, yeah. It's 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 really hard to do. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I actually, I've dropped my my Twitter one because I don't I don't like the platform anymore. I just find it quite combative. Very, it's full of vitriol. I just I just don't like Twitter anymore. So I basically put a post up and said I'm not monitoring this account anymore. You'll find me over on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. So and because Instagram and Facebook, they're both Facebook, aren't they? They're both owned by the same people. So yeah. um, I. I really only monitor Instagram, Facebook, and my YouTube comments. But I, I, I did a podcast with the Bro and the Brick. Well, not a podcast. I did this sort of business get together with another podcast called the Bro and the Brave that I'd been a guest on a few years ago. And somebody brought up about screen time, how you can check your screen time on your phone, on your Apple phone. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know anything about it. And I looked at it, and I was spending, I think it was 18 or 19 hours a day on my phone. And I just thought, no wonder it's taking me five or six days to get a video out, because I'm I'm sat on my bloody phone. So I did exactly what you said. I turned off the notifications, and wow, what what a difference. But they've started to creep in. Because I was missing the odd thing, 
I, I've found I like I turned WhatsApp back on, and then I've turned I've turned YouTube back on because I wasn't responding to comments and. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You, lot, you, you have to. Lot, so there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's a, there's yeah, a lot, yeah. lot to take yeah. on. The thing is, in my last company, I had I had a department that did all that. <laughs> 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 all the social media sort of stuff yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, when I say department I had, a, I had a few people managing all of the Twitter and the, and the, the Facebook that we had because we didn't, weren't doing Instagram but we were doing Facebook mm-hmm. and um, link, LinkedIn and stuff like that yeah so, that's um, powerful as well mm-hmm. See, I, yeah. I enjoy the interaction. I enjoy the engagement. It's part of it, and I've really missed. I think I've really, I've really missed that sort of one-on-one communication that I used to get when I was out in the bike, traveling around the country, meeting up with people through social mm. media. And I've missed that. And it's not, it's not the same. Just doing it via messages and DMs and stuff. It's, it's not the same as face to face, is it? You know. No. So I can't not. wait. I can't wait to have that back. But um, right, dude, that's that is almost three yeah. hours. Believe it or not. Oh my God, do you know? I, I, when I see your videos, I'm thinking, damn, it's in a brew time, like two and a half hours. I'm thinking, how? But I can yeah. see how it happens. It's because you got me. I, I waffle. I waffle. Sorry. <laughs> no, mate, not at any time. I've I've really enjoyed it, mate. It's it's lovely to sort of as best as we can chat face to face. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's good. All right, dude, um, before we go, is there anybody you want to get a shout out to? Any plugs you want to give? Feel free. Space is yours. I had too much drink, Bruce. <laughs> I can't think of anything. <laughs> tit arse bollocks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah tit, tit arse bollocks. There we go. No, I've got, I've got no one I can think of giving me a shout out to. No, sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for you then. Folks, um, on, check out check out Steve's YouTube channel. The links will be down below. You've got the Instagram. You're on Facebook as well. Uh, yeah. Any other any other socials that you want to? No, just Facebook, out? Instagram and YouTube. Cool. So check them out. If you enjoy what you see, what you hear, then make sure you give them a like, a follow, a subscribe. And um, dude, I can't wait to actually do this in person at some point. We'll have to we'll have to do something together. I want to come see your drone. Yeah, beers in the hot tub and a bit of dr- play with the drone. <laughs> right, you're on. Let's do it. <laughs> Sounds like stag boy heaven, that. <laughs> it is. It's pretty cool. <laughs> cool, man. You look after yourself. Thank you very much for coming on yeah. for a chat and um, we'll be in touch, all right? Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Top man. Cheers, mate. Right, folks. Bye. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Keep on doing your thing. Look after those that you love, as always. But get on out there whenever you can and live your life. Woo ha! Cheers, dude.